A graceful quarterback who has matured into one of the game's most exciting players. With rookie Jerome Brown joining Reggie White up front, the Eagles defense is coming with a force that feisty Buddy Ryan applauds. Remember slinging Sammy Baugh and the Dutchman, Norm Van Brocklin? Today, it'll be Jay Schrader for the Skins and Randall Cunningham for the Eagles as the rivalry continues. And the Philadelphia Eagles know that this could be a very big day for them in their comeback in the National Football League as they tackle one of the high-flying teams in the league, the Washington Redskins, before a sellout crowd here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Ideal weather conditions, temperatures in the 60s, not much of a breeze, and sunny skies. The Redskins have won five in a row and have a lead in the division, but the Philadelphia Eagles, if you discount the replacement games, have won three out of four and they feel that they are definitely a team on the rise. Hello again everyone, I'm Dick Stockton and the 100th renewal of this longtime rivalry should be a good one today if the Eagles live up to their billing. Now, if the Redskins play today the way they did against the Bills last week, forget about it. They were near perfect in beating Buffalo with the good ground game and the fine defense. How good are the Eagles? I think this is the kind of a game you will find out how far they've come. My partner is Terry Bradshaw. And what is your handle on the two clubs, Terry? Oh, uh, Joe Gibbs wants to come in and run power football. And that's Rodgers right, Rodgers left, Rodgers up the middle. He thinks he can do that and win. I disagree. I think they're going to have to throw the football down the field deep to beat this Eagle team. On the other side, one of the most exciting young players in the National Football League. Get this, Randall Cunningham, young three, third-year quarterback coming out. He's going to scramble right and left, just absolutely drives. Defense is crazy, and the Skins are concerned about him today. If they win today, Cunningham running right and left and throwing on the go. All right, Terry, and the Eagles have won the toss, and Steve Cox kicking the game underway and it's rookie Bobby Morse at the one yard line for the Eagles and on a reverse Morse goes to Chris Carter from Ohio State and Carter takes it out beyond the 25 yard line where he is stopped by Clarence Vaughn both coaches had indicated to us that there'll be a lot of razzle dazzle in this game they're not leaving anything to chance and Randall Cunningham can be an explosive quarterback and has many dimensions. The defense for the Washington Redskins, very solid up front with Charles Mann and Dexter Manley at the ends. Dave Butts and Darrell Grant the tackles. Neil Okowitz is starting as Rich Mallott is shaken up with an ankle injury. Green and Wilburn are the corners. Walton and Bowles the safety. First and ten on the 28-yard line. And on the first play of the game, Anthony Tony, the fullback, is stopped for no gain. The rest of the offense for the Eagles. Keith Byers, who's been looking good at running back, starts with Tony. Mike Wick and Kenny Jackson, the wide receivers. Matt Darwin, Adam Schreiber, Jerry Fury, Ron Baker, and Joe Conwell are the offensive linemen. And John Spagnola, who was doubtful with a groin injury, is indeed starting. Gain of one, second and nine. Junior Cardo Lacasse, a good receiver. Now in the backfield with Tony. And it's Cardo Lacasse trying to go outside. Monty Coleman chases him. And again, the Redskins with good pursuit will bring up a third and long for the Philadelphia Eagles. That time it was Monty Coleman and Neil Okowitz on the stop. Monty Coleman making his presence felt automatically, Dick, here early. Coming in first down on a blitz and then that time taking in the pursuit, getting outside and making the stop. Greg Garrity, who was the hero with the winning touchdown catch against the Cardinals in the final minute, has come in the game as the wide receiver. Chris Carter also in there. Third down and nine at the 29. Cunningham has some time, and he completes to Garrity. Good for a first down at the 40-yard line. A pickup of 11. you like to do as a quarterback early in a football game is find the player that has single coverage. Obviously, if I were the Redskins, I'd single Garrity also. He's the slowest of the receivers, but that time he gets position on Walton and makes the first down. In the opening game of the season, the Redskins beat the Eagles 34-24, but not after having to withstand an Eagle fight. 
first and ten at the 40. Byers back in the game, number 41, and carries for the first time and gets nothing. Darrell Grant making the tackle. And Terry, while the Redskins have been able to run in the last week or so, they have always been able to stop the opposing team's rushing attack. Well, they're so big up front, Grant and Butts are just two huge 600 pounds of defensive linemen. And the thing that's happened automatically here is that the Eagles are coming out, Dick, and they're just going straight at the Redskins. And I don't think that they can play that way. I don't believe they can go man for man and blow the Redskins off the ball. Second down and 10. the audible fires gets maybe a yard Neil Olkowitz making the stop there was a lot of talk in Washington this week particularly by Mark Murphy former player representative about the fact that Neil Olkowitz the player representative has not regained his starting spot after being hurt in preseason Rich Malott had the job and Malott going out Olkowitz coming in and the defense had worked with Malott in the middle coaches will not change a player even though he wasn't a starter if he takes over for an injured player especially if he's playing well. Marcus Cook and Steve Hamilton in for the added pass rush for the Redskins. Third and nine at the 41. Cunningham in trouble. Gets away from Mann. And his pass is overthrown out of bounds intended for Greg Garrity. Defending was Dennis Woodbury. We saw a glimpse of the Redskin pressure from Manley last week and they stormed in on Randall Cunningham that time. Well, you can... One of the things that was impressive that time was that the actually the pass rush route by the ends was wide. If they were, if Cunningham was going to run with the football, they wanted him to run up inside, and they had butts of those guys waiting on him. John Telsha coming off his best game, averaging 51 last week, will be kicking, and Eric Yarber is deep for the Redskins. Yarber backs up to the 15. To the 21 22 yard line that's all seth joiner makes the special teams tackle for the eagles a 43 yard punt we'll see the skins with the ball when we come back randall cunningham on the sideline a banner day last week a little bit tougher competition today in the washington redskins and john spagnola with him there and now the man of the moment is jay schrader who suffered a sprained right shoulder in the fifth offensive play of the opening game against the Eagles, so he didn't get a chance to play against them. First and ten on the 23 for the Washington Redskins. And on the first play, nearly an interception by Andre Waters on the pass intended for Didier. It's a timing pass. Hitch patterns are nothing but a timing route. That's excellent timing by Schrader and his receiver Didier, but the key was the break. The break that time by Andre Waters. 20 breaking on the ball. Doggone near should have been intercepted. Second down and 10. with a big game against the Bills, 125 yards, running against the likes of Reggie White, Ken Clark, Jerome Brown, the rookie, and Clyde Simmons. Seth Joyner, Mike Reichenbach, and Dwayne Giles are the linebackers. Roynell Young and Elbert Fowles man the corners, and Andre Waters and Terry Hogue are the safeties. Third down and seven, and that means Kelvin Bryan has come in the game. He scored a couple of touchdowns against Buffalo last week. situation for Zell, number 33, William Frizzell, following Art Monk, made it look as though he had Monk man for man at the snap of the ball. He cut in off right tackle. No one there to block him. Got in Schrader's face, almost forced an interception. Bobby Morris, the rookie from Michigan State, is back to receive the punt from Cox. Good kick by Steve. 
Morse up high, and Morse inside the 25. Barely gets to the 30-yard line where Vernon Dean makes the stop. A 49-yard kick by Steve Cox. So each team has had a chance to handle the football, and we have no score here in the first quarter. What do the Eagles want to do offensively against Washington? Well, they're going to try to run the football. We saw that in their first series, but they got nothing far that I think in this second possession now, we're going to see Cunningham come out and throw the football. The tackles, that time Grant and Butts, are just sitting there paralleling the line of scrimmage, and they can't blow them off, so they're not rushing the passer. So look for him to open it up and throw the football now. They're on the 29, first and 10, Byers and Tony in the backfield. of the ball game and Cunningham goes right down and another flag is down and Cunningham might have been shaken up Darrell Grant may have gotten in with a late hit and that has upset several of the Philadelphia Eagles and they haven't separated them yet and Cunningham is shaken up the backup quarterback is Matt Cavanaugh two flags thrown Referee is Fred Wyatt. Well, this is a rivalry that does not need. Offsides, number 72, five yards. The mic went dead, but it was Dexter Manley with a five-yard offside penalty and Darrell Grant on the late hit. Well, you'll see that the long cadence here by Cunningham draws Manley off. Now the play action. Now you're going to see Cunningham realizing he's sacked. He goes down. You can't touch him here. Now you can see 77, Daryl Grant, coming in and putting his head and shoulder on the quarterback. That's a no-no, and in some cases, you might even see him get thrown out. Matt Cavanaugh, former 49er and Patriot quarterback, is getting ready. They're still working on Randall Cunningham. And now Buddy Ryan is coming on the field to check with his quarterback to see whether he has to make a change here. And you can bet, as you see Ryan pointing to Grant, you can bet that Ryan was saying a few words to Grant. Now he's talking to his players, trying to fire them up. And now listen to the crowd. He was pointing right at Darrell Grant. Buddy Ryan, who likes his team right now. The days of his criticism of his ball club are gone. He told us on Friday he likes the people he has right now. He says, anytime I criticize the defense, I'll be criticizing myself in effect. Other than that, I like these boys. But Ryan has said at an early part when he came here, Dick, that he would take the heat and put all the heat on himself, but he expects his players now to rise up and they should take the heat. Matt Cavanaugh has come in at quarterback for the Eagles. On a first and 10 at the 29 after the penalty. Slicing doesn't get much near the yard. And already tempers have flared in this game. And we're only in the opening minutes of this game. Dexter Manley and Neil Okowitz make the tackle and the cheers are for Randall Cunningham as he comes back to the game. Anytime you have a rivalry, you can expect things of that nature. A late hit, even a small one or a big one, to fire everyone up, especially here in Philadelphia because this is where they're playing. of the game for the Philadelphia Eagles. There's another penalty marker down, and Tony is stopped about two yards shy of a first down. Mel Kaufman makes the stop. Here's Fred Wyant. Illegal block in the back, number 88. John Spagnola, the veteran tight end, called for an illegal block, and maybe that's why Tony was able to get six yards. penalty of the game against the Eagles. The Redskins were hit with a combined penalty of 15 yards. The five yard offside and then the 15 yard personal foul. But now the Eagles are set back to their 35 yard line. It'll be second down and 13 with nearly five minutes elapsed in the first quarter. No score between the Redskins and the Eagles. This is an important NFC East battle. They send buyers in motion. To Tony, 
Bucks chasing him is blocked out of the play, and Anthony Tony goes out of bounds. Alvin Walton made the tackle. It'll be third down and long. Excellent worse. Yes, that excellent coverage that time by the secondary of the Washington Redskins. But another key factor was a play of butts that time. The tackle just floating out into the screen area, forcing Cunningham to delay the timing of the screen, allowing everyone to come up and make the stop. Chris Carter, who is taken on the fourth round of the supplemental draft by the Eagles out of Ohio State, for a touchdown passes in, in his NFL debut last week. He's in the ball game. Cunningham goes up the middle, and a great catch by Garrity in midfield. Woodbury makes the tackle, and the Eagles have another first down, and Garrity has caught both third down catches. They found something. They found that Garrity, 86, in the slot has got man-for-man -man coverage by Dennis Woodbury, 46. And all Cunningham is doing is simply taking the snap, dropping back, and throwing the ball to Garrity, who can seem right now he went outside the first time, second time he came inside. Original Pittsburgh Steeler, good hands. They call him trash. Anything you throw, even jump, he'll scoop it up. <laughs> he made a good play there. First and ten at midfield. Play action. Cunningham gets by Butts. And this is what the Redskins don't like at all. Randall Cunningham is now racing for the end zone. One man to beat, and he's knocked out of bounds at the five. A 45-yard run by Randall Cunningham. Randall Cunningham doesn't like to do play action, and they don't want their young quarterback doing a lot of play action because he turns his back to the secondary. This time it is play action, he's forced out, and the thing I told you earlier, this is when he is his most dangerous. This is where he's comfortable, and that is putting the football under his arm and running with it. Barry Wilburn and Darrell Green combined to make the stop. Here's why Darrell Coleman told us, Monty Coleman, 51, says, I don't want to see him run with the football. He drives me crazy. Look at this, all the way across the field, and now the embarrassing part, he misses the tackle. And the Eagles have called a timeout, a wise timeout with 8.54 to go in the first. You get this close to scoring against the Redskins, you want to make sure you do. The longest run of Randall Cunningham's career, 45 yards, has set up a first and goal at the five for the Eagles. Tony, who fumbled on his first two carries in the opening game against the Redskins at RFK Stadium, has scored a touchdown to give the Eagles an early 6-0 lead, with 8.50 remaining here in the first quarter. Coming right at you, it's just a simple turnaround pitch to Tony in the backfield. Byers leading on a kick out, two tight ends to the right. As you can see, Byers doing a good job. And then there's Barry Wilburn, 45, as he cuts up inside of him and makes the touchdown. Conversion is good, and the Eagles lead it 7-0. Anthony Tony, in his second year out of Texas A&M. He wore a flak jacket in that opening game against the Redskins and wanted to redeem himself. He scored the big touchdown, but it was Cunningham who came back after getting knocked out for a play who made the big run. The Redskins had been impenetrable against the rushing offenses until that touchdown. So it is a 7-0 game in favor of Philadelphia. One of the real problems now that Washington is going to have throughout the remaining part of this game is they're going to concentrate so heavily now on stopping Randall Cunningham from getting outside that it's automatically will slow down the pass rush and now it'll allow Cunningham to set up in the pocket and throw the football down the field. If, if they do put pressure on him, once again look for him to scramble. You saw the drive and it took two minutes and 41 seconds. Cunningham's 45-yarder on a scramble was the big play, but don't forget the third and 11 when Greg Garrity caught a pass to keep the rally going for the Eagles. John Telchik will be kicking off now for Philadelphia. After
to the opening game of the season. Telchik replaced McFadden as the kickoff man, and deep for the Redskins is Keith Griffin. So Anthony Tony with his second touchdown rushing of the season. Be interesting to see how Joe Gibbs plays it now. Still trying to keep the ball on the ground or whether he'll open it up a bit. Griffin in the end zone will let it bounce away for a touchback. And the Redskins will take over on the 20-yard line as the Redskins trainers work on Randall Cunningham's neck. By the Eagle trainers, you would think that might be from the Daryl Grant here, but actually when at the end of the run, the scramble while ago, Cunningham lowered his left shoulder into the safety, and they're rubbing, they're putting a little hot stuff on that thing, you know, it cremagesic stuff, that slop, and it's supposed to heat it up and make it feel better. Well, Cunningham came back after one play, and now Jay Schrader brings out the Redskins, first and ten at the 20-yard line. suffered a sprained right shoulder when he scored a touchdown against the Eagles in their first meeting and was placed uh, on the injured list. Redskins came in that time, Dick, with three tight ends with Didier in the backfield going in motion and actually playing like a running back leading up inside for the counter trade with Rodgers carrying off the right side where there were three tight ends. Second down and one. Alonzo Johnson is now the right linebacker for the Eagles replacing Dwayne Giles who was shaken up. Brings it out just shy of the 35-yard line. Reggie White making the tackle. Last week, the Redskins controlled the ball for nearly 41 minutes of their game against the Buffalo Bills. And Buddy Ryan doesn't think that they can run against the 46 defense. Yes, that's what he said, but what he hasn't done so far is give them the 46 defense. They played a straight four, four down lineman. They have not brought White in on the nose tackle and played the 46 defense so far with a first down on their own 35-yard line. Eight minutes to go, first quarter. And Schrader throws it away. Art Monk was the closest man to the ball. Terry Hogue was covering, and right now Jay Schrader has opened the game 0 for 3 in the passing department. One of the keys last week for the St. Louis Cardinals passing attack was the three-step drop for Lomax to get rid of the football. Coming into this game, the Redskins want to run the little five-yard hitch, hitch and out, and all of those things. But what's happening is that the Eagles are playing off their corners, and at the snap of the ball, running up and jamming them, taking it away from Schrader. Art Monk's the only wide receiver in the action, and he's out to the left, being watched by foul. Second and ten, and a penalty marker. Raleigh McKenzie, the left guard, might have moved. Number 63. And it is McKenzie. So now Trader will face a second down and 15. Well, McKenzie's on Jerome Brown, 99. It's the matchup that really that Washington wants because they feel McKenzie is one of their better blockers. They would like to put him on the best lineman for the Eagles. Brown and McKenzie, good matchup. Maybe McKenzie that time says, oh, I've got to get the edge. I've got to come off a little quicker and therefore gets the offsides. That's been the strength of the Redskin offensive line, Jacoby and McKenzie on the left side. And Gary Clark is in the game as a wide receiver, and the Redskins know that they're thin in that department. Clark has a hamstring problem, and uh, they were actually thinking of making him inactive for this game and activating Anthony Allen, but they stuck with Clark. Well, Clark's got, it's, it's really not a hamstring, it's the tendon, uh, Dick, that ties into the back of the knee that's inflamed, and what's happened is that Clark's had this now for two years, and it's something that he didn't practice all week, but Schrader told us last night that, hey, this guy missed eight games last week of practicing, but played in the game. The officials and Fred Wyatt over there conferring with Joe Gibbs for about something. I wonder if there's a headset problem. And if there is, that means the Eagles have to uh, remove their headset as well. We're not sure of that. Whatever it is, it's not serious, as you can tell by Fred Wyant's expression. But he's not, but he's not laughing. Doesn't laugh often. <laughs> sure doesn't. 
15. The Eagles defending against the Redskins. Washington's 29. Schrader with a design rollout has a lot of time and he drills wide open. wide open is Gary Clark and he overthrows him and he was indeed wide open. Roynell Young was the closest defender, if you want to call him that, on that play. And it'll go as an incompleted pass, third down coming up. First time, as you can see, Reggie White, 92, over the center. This is the 46 defense that Ryan has made so famous in Chicago. Schrader get, getting outside of the pocket, disrupts the coverage, finds Clark wide open, and just simply overthrows him. Clark still the top receiver on this club. Washington 45-yard line, and the tackle is made by Elbert Fowles, and a gain of 16. And there's another fight happening on the other side of the field. And Wyant and his crew are going to have their hands full in this one. The Redskin headset went out, and that was why the officials consulted with the coaches. So both teams not using the headset right now. First and ten for the Redskins on their own 45-yard line. Mike Pitts coming to the sideline, former Atlanta Falcon. Two tight ends, Warren and Caravello for the Redskins. Here's Rodgers off the right side, gets a good hole. George Rogers gets into Eagle territory, has a first down, a pickup of 11 to the 44-yard line where the middle linebacker Mike Reichenbach finally brought him down. To the right of your screen, you'll see both the left guard McKenzie and left tackle Jacoby in the famed counter, counter gap play run by the Redskins. As long as the Eagles stay out of the 46, this is the first time we've seen the counter gap that we'll see this play 20 to 30 times today. Used to be counter tray, used to be bullets, but now we found out it's counter gap. I think they change it every year. Change it every <laughs> week, I think. First and ten at the 44, play action. Didier open downfield, good pressure, and Rogers drops the ball on the short pattern. Didier was open down the field, but a good rush by the Eagles for Schrader to go to his right. And it'll be second down. Are you surprised that we haven't seen much of the 46 so far from Philadelphia? We've only seen it one time, and that was when they expected him to throw the football. I think what Ryan would like to do, if he gets into the 46, he's putting his corners man for man. And therefore, what will happen is Schrader will drop back and bombs away. I think he's hoping they can play him with a straight 4-3 and stop him. it away and it's caught by Bryant and Bryant may have another first down for the Redskins Reichenbach makes the tackle Reggie White put good pressure on Jay Schrader end zone as you can see the 46 look at 92 Reggie White pulling the center to the left now that is the 46 when you see him over the center but the thing you mustn't forget about is that Schrader has that ability to get outside when he feels pressure and to throw the football on the run all right, Reggie White, 92, noticing right over the middle. Thielman, 69, trying to help out the center, but too late. Schrader gets rid of the football first down. Bryant stays in the game. First down, normally it's Rodgers, but Bryant stays in there. And first and 10 on the 33 of the Eagles. 7-0 Philadelphia, fake reverse, and Kelvin Bryant gets inside the 30 and gets clobbered at the 20-yard line and another first down. Seth Joyner and Roynell Young both hit him. Well, uh, last last week against Buffalo, we saw we saw Monk on three reverses. So the, what happened? They said, "Well, we're, they're not going to take. They're going to take the Monk reverse away. So we'll fake it to Monk and then let 
and let Kelvin Bryant keep it. Now, this is excellent running as he makes fouls, 29. He makes him miss, and then down to the 20-yard line for the first down. On the 20-yard line, Redskins with Rodgers back in there, and Caravello, the up tight end blocker, and blocking for Rodgers, and that time, George doesn't get much as he is brought down at the 17-yard line by Seth Joyner. An aggressive Eagle defense, and we've been talking about that, and that was Buddy Ryan's number one priority. He's got white and brown up front, and Joyner has become a pretty good outside linebacker for him. Seth Joyner is a very talented linebacker. He's, he's totally opposite of Giles. Giles is a straight-up guy, looks good in his uniform and runs well, but when you break off of Giles, he can't cover. Joyner has all the athletic skills. Second down and eight. The ball at the Eagles, 18. Bryant. And Bryant gets a first down and gets to about the six-yard line and knocked out of bounds that time. Roynell Young and Terry Hope both defending, but another Washington first down. Version of the 46 without White over the nose tackle this time. 74 pits coming in, another counter action, but just excellent running by Bryant. There's the hole to the outside, cuts back inside, high steps it for the first down. But Kelvin Bryant has gained 25 yards on two carries during this drive, and the 12th play is upcoming. First and goal at the five. Redskins trying to tie this game, trailing 7 0. And Rodgers. Barrels inside the five to about the three. Mike Pitts on the stop. The clock running here in the first quarter. It's awful hard to go up inside of Brown 99 and Clark 71, the two tackles. But you'll see Washington try to do that as Gibbs stated earlier. We want to do the power running. But I right now would like to see something with Didier in motion, come out, play action, get outside with Schrader, who has that great athletic skills, and do play action pass and find a tight end crossing in the corner of the end zone. Second and goal on the three, and Reggie Branch has come in. Short yardage blocker for the Redskins. And it's Rodgers, and he's in for the touchdown. Straight ahead, simple blocking play, and Rodgers with his second touchdown rushing for the Redskins. A good block from McKenzie at left guard, and it's now 7-6. to six. Well, it's going to come right at you. Didier in motion, right of your screen, he kicks out. And now Clark coming down inside, following his guard. There's Tillman, 69, leads the way, and Rodgers gets in. And if you want ball control, and that's what Joe Gibbs demands, he got it on that series. Ali Haji Sheik will attempt to tie the game with Jay Schrader holding. With 341 remaining in the first quarter. kick is good and we're all even at seven apiece so the Redskins with a six and one start matching the best ever under Joe Gibbs have come back to tie the Eagles here in the first quarter there's the scoring drive and Terry they took the crowd out of that in a hurry didn't they that's a counter punch Philadelphia goes down and scores. They're at home. The crowd is up. The players are fired up. They're the upstart team. And then the Washington Redskins with all the real class and the maturity of a, of a seasoned team coming down and answering that call. Boy, they really took the crowd out of the game right there. 7-7. Seven, seven, Morris is back. And Cox puts his foot to the ball. And a line drive. One hopper taken by Cedric Brown. And Brown his way to the 23 and right now for an nfl today report let's check in with brent musburger in new york brent well dick the packers are doing a good job against chicago randy wright under pressure gets it off to his tight end ed west 27 yards for the score deadlocked at seven and the packers are challenging again back to dick all right brent thank you very much and of course Washington supporters looking closely at the Bears today because they also have a 6-1 and one record. They look down the road for home field advantage. First and 10 at the 23 for the Eagles in a tie game. Cunningham is trapped. Mann chases him. And the pass is caught by Byers at the 34-yard line. Good for a first down. Alvin Walton on the stop, but a tough catch by Keith Byers. 
Excellent catch, because Byers is a runner. Notice how they're doubling teaming Manley on the outside. Notice this, coming up with Schreiber and Darwin, 78 and 76, making sure that Randall Cunningham has plenty of time to throw. And the key here is that Manley is to the blind side of the quarterback, so that's the reason they double team. Gain of 11 on that play. And now we have a whistle and a stoppage of play. I haven't the foggiest idea. Buddy Ryan doesn't know. But, but now they're ready to play. And 10 Eagles on their own 35 and right up the middle Anthony Tony and he carried a few defenders close to the 40 yard line he showed some good power there got nearly five yards that time Darrell Grant and Neil Olkowitz on the stop one of the things when you talk to Philadelphia everything that they that circles around is balance we want to balance the tack with Cunningham he throws everything out of balance, and what you're seeing now is they've gotten away from running on first down, scrambling and throwing on first down has now opened up a running attack. Pass setting up the run, second down and five. And there's Tony. Finally, Coleman helps in and makes the tackle. Okowitz hit him first, and the Eagles are short by about three and a half yards on the play. But the Eagles have really struggled. In fact, Buddy Ryan was saying, he says, in my two years here, I think there's been only one game that I've been happy with the rushing attack. He wants the rushing attack. Of course, when he was in Chicago with Peyton, he was spoiled by the greatest running back ever to play this game. And he had a great quarterback in McMahon, and this Randall Cunningham is answering that. And they're hoping that Byers and Tony are the combination of running backs that he needs to win and get this team to the Super Bowl. And we see how tough the Redskins are at stopping the run. Third down and two. Walton coming in, and the pass incomplete intended for Mike Quick. Darrell Green covering on the play, but the man who really made it go was Alvin Walton, who came in with a safety blitz on the blind side. Coming from the top left of your screen, outside of this man, coming inside, just a straight, simple blitz, eight-man front, Cunningham coming out. When he turns his back in play action, there's no way that he can pick this blitz up. Had he dropped back, he would have been able to see it and gotten rid of the football a lot sooner. John Telchik, with a good kick the first time around, will be booting to Eric Yarber. Come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. We have 2.05 remaining in the first quarter. We're tied at seven. Anthony Tony with a five-yard run to give the Eagles the lead, and then Rodgers went over from three yards to tie the game. Booming punt by Telchik, and Yarber, looking up in the sun, dives forward at the 22. Dave Little makes the stop on that play. 38-yard kick as you look at the Philadelphia Eagles bench. They're looking for their third victory in a row for the first time in two years. Offense did the job, and Buddy was not pleased with the emotion of the defensive unit. Well, that's what he said. He he said, we have enough emotion stored up now that we should go out today, defensively, that is, and play with an abundance of emotion since we didn't use any, any of it against St. Louis. Well, the Redskins quieted the crowd with their 13-play scoring drive the last time. Right now, the crowd is in neutral. First and 10 at the 22. Schrader he's open and overthrows it. Didier was chased by Seth Joyner and Andre Waters. Didier returned to the starting lineup last week primarily as a blocker. Well, Jay Schrader can't be happy with himself. I, I as a quarterback, know what it's like. He very ra rarely do you get in a first quarter two players, two receivers wide open for touchdowns. And so far, he's missed both of them, and his confidence, it has to come down. So now he's got he's to hit a big one to get it back up. This guy is the best long ball thrower in the National Football League. Trader is two for eight for 27 yards. Neither offense has really established any kind of momentum. The passing crowd here at Veterans Stadium waiting and watches. Trader's pass overthrown to Art Monk. Roynell Young covering on the play. And it'll be third down, and right now, Jay Schrader is struggling. When it goes bad, it goes
knows that in, in the early part of the football game as a young quarterback, it, things have to happen good for you to feel good about yourself. And this kid is, this kid can make it happen, but nothing's going good for him. And it, it will be a carryover until something big, and it won't be a five-yarder. It'll be a 50-yarder that gets him out of it. It's a passing down, but you're right. The Redskins have gone to the pass more to the rush on this series. Kelvin Bryant is in the game now as a receiver. Traders pass to Monk, covered by Roynell Young, incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. So Roynell Young, one of the best, and he was the top defensive player on the Eagles last year, defending... The equally tough Art Monk, and it'll be fourth down, and Steve Cox will come in and punt again for the Redskins. Bobby Morse goes back for the Eagles. On the clock, we have a minute and 39 seconds to go in the first quarter of a 7-7 game. good field position and he does as he is stopped on the Eagle 47 by Vernon Dean a 39 yard kick so the Eagles have the ball in a pretty good spot as they try to take the lead over the Washington Redskins two years ago the last time that the Eagles had won three straight games and they're aware that their next two games are against Division opponents, the Giants and the Cardinals here at Veteran Stadium. But this is their big one. First and ten, Philadelphia on their own 47. And it's Tony diving forward close to midfield. Gets to the 49, a pickup of two yards. Making the tackle was Neil Olkowitz. suffered the knee injury in the preseason opener when people were clamoring for his return Joe Gibbs said don't worry he'll play he'll see his action that was before Malat suffered that ankle injury second down and eight and here is a fake reverse Byers chased by Mann and that play just flat out didn't work as Kaufman and Mann combined to stop Byers and a loss on the play to the 45. Washington is not a good team to run reverses on man and manly. Two defensive ends do an outstanding job of, of getting up the field and containing. And also the linebackers for Washington are a contained, oriented linebacking core forcing the secondary to make the hits. So this is not a good team to run reverses on because simply put, no one is chasing. Loss of five. It'll be third down and 13. Eagles on their own 44. Garrity is in the game. And Woodbury, the extra cornerbacks. Garrity has caught two passes. Here comes pressure on Cunningham, and he's going to go deep. And it's Chris Carter, who was covered by Morrison downfield, bowls to help. Incomplete to Chris Carter, and before long, you're going to see Carter, I think, in the starting lineup of this team. Well, you will. I was extremely impressed that time with Randall Cunningham as he tried to go to Garrity on the slot going on the outside. But what Washington did was bring two safeties in to cover double Garrity. And therefore, Carter was single covered and Kendall, Randall Cunningham saw it and went to him. Yarber is back and Telchik will kick. No wonder they double Garrity after two clutch third down catches. Can you imagine Garrity putting a fear into your heart? Off the side of the foot, but it stays in bounds and now goes out at the 22-yard line. So Telchik not happy with the way he hit that ball. 34 yards was the kick. And we have less than a minute to go, 31 seconds in the first quarter. And the Redskins will go on attack again. Very important drive for Schrader. Very important that he gets some consistency going here with his passing. He's had guys open, especially when he's been on the run. So I expect him to do some of the same. If we see the 46, look for Schrader to get outside and throw deep again on the run. Skins on their own 23. 7-7 seven, seven the score. And Rodgers gets hit once. Second time for good. Dwayne Giles at the 22-yard line. No gain on 
on the play. All right, the 46, as you can, this is White, that's Clark, that's Brown. They come inside and outside. You got a linebacker, 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 all coming in like this. There's eight people up there, and there's no place to run the football. This is what Ryan hopes the 46 will accomplish, and that is stopping the run. That time it was successful. And there's the gun ending the first quarter here at Veterans Stadium. The Redskins and the Eagles all even. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Liberty Mutual. For your personal insurance, business insurance, and financial service needs. Honda, maker of the new Civic four-door sedans. And by Tandy Computers, because there is no better value, only at Radio Shack. This is Dick Stockton along with Terry Bradshaw at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia on a beautiful Sunday. And a sellout crowd on hand, and the Redskins and Eagles are all tied 7-7 seven and seven as we start the second quarter. Washington with the ball, it'll be second down and 10 on their 22-yard line. So far, their balance has been perfect between the run and the pass. Ten plays each. Rogers, Caravello blocking in front. Coming in to make the play is Clyde Simmons. Blocked a field goal two weeks in a row. He has become a player. Time of possession is so crucial to Joe Gibbs and what the Redskins want to do and uh, the numbers will show that the Eagles more than held their own in the first quarter. Well, 704, 756 tells you that, Was that Washington is in fact doing what they want to do, but Philadelphia is doing more than they want to do. They're not having to rely on the pass. They're able to run. Third down and nine. And here comes pressure on Schrader and the pass is intercepted by Jerome Brown. gets in Schrader's face, forces them to unload the football, and waiting for it was Brown, 99. Reggie White, you have to be concerned about him. The thing he does best is rush the pass where he's over the center in the 46. He takes his right hand, pushes on the center, goes around and knocks the center into Tillman, gets by him, and is automatically in the face of Schrader. First and ten at the 17-yard line for the Eagles with a golden opportunity here. Cunningham going for Jackson and it's overthrown, covered by Barry Wilburn on the play, and it'll be second down. So Jay Schrader with only his second interception of the year and the first turnover of this game. The Eagles with a great opportunity a minute into this second quarter. Washington coming out on first down and blitzing. We haven't seen them blitz all day long. They came out that time and blitzed Cunningham. Didn't allow him time to pick up his secondary receiver. Had he had the time, he would have seen Byers wide open in the end zone. This time they put Jackson and Quick out to the left side. Coleman and out of bounds at the 13-yard line, a pickup of four yards that time. Anthony Tony, the fullback, but an unusual role for Tony. Well, Tony is a he plays fullback for the Eagles, but he's actually smaller. He's actually smaller than Byers. And also, he's a fullback that has the ability to run option routes on, on the linebackers. He comes out of the backfield from the fullback position and catches passes. Very unusual for a fullback to do that. Greg Garrity comes in as the third wide receiver for the Eagles on third down and six at the 13. Shotgun. Cunningham runs up the middle is close to a first down and maybe shy by about a yard and a half. Todd Bowles, and there you see how short Cunningham is. Todd Bowles made the stop. Randall Cunningham with the running ability, you have to respect it. Excellent call by the coaching staff that shows pass, sets up, and when he sets up, the linebackers drop back deep into their coverage, 
and then allows Cunningham to get up and almost make the first down. Not a very big guy, so I'm surprised that they use running plays designed for him just to run the football. He scrambles enough on his own. The Eagles have called their second timeout of this first half, and both timeouts have come when they were threatening inside the 10-yard line of the Redskins. There's the time remaining, and Philadelphia has one left, and the man who made the stop and prevented the first down was Todd Bowles, the free safety who played his college ball right here in Philadelphia at Temple University. Now, a question everyone is asking, should they go for it or should they not? Here's how I answer that. If those offensive players on that football field want to go for it, then the coach should let them go for it, because number one, they believe they can make it, and that's all that you need to know. Terry, how often would offensive players say, no, I don't think we can make it, let's go for a field goal? I don't think ever. I think they always believe it. But you can tell, you can also, you can say, coach, let's go for it. And you can say, coach, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Everybody says, let's go for it. You can show, you know, there's two ways of well, saying it. Well, as a coach, do how do you know whether they're just saying it because it's automatic? Well, when they're automatic. pulling your hair and grabbing your face <laughs> and hitting you, kicking you, you say, well, all right, boys, go ahead and go for it. And that's what they're doing. Jimmy Giles is in the game as an extra tight end. It's fourth down and goal at the fourth and two, we should say. Fourth down and two. And on a reverse, and a fake pass, wide open, and out of the end zone, incomplete. Bobby Morse, they faked a handoff, they faked a reverse, and Bobby Morse just couldn't stay in bounds, and Dave Butts put great pressure on Cunningham. The key is by the guards, but you can see Dave Butts paid no attention to the guard pulling. He dis disregarded the guard and went straight for the quarterback and forced him to overthrow his man. See, those tackles have reads, and when those guards pull, the tackles normally chase down, but Butts that time, he said, forget that guard, and he went straight up the field and got into Cunningham's face. So the Redskins take over on downs, and we'll come back. Second guessing is pretty easy to do, 20-20 hindsight, oh. but the Eagles missed the chance to get three, but now the Redskins start from their own eight-yard line. I like the call. Nothing wrong with the call. Just good defense by Butts. seeing Philadelphia go exclusively to the 46. Reggie White over the center once again, coming inside, destroying the guard, pushing Tillman off, and then playing back across his block and making the sack. Well, sack, making the tackle. You can sense the confidence now that the Eagle defense is getting in the 46. Look for him to stay in. Well, Buddy Ryan has confidence in his defense. Jerome Brown picked one off. The Eagles had the ball on the 17th, couldn't score. Now it's second and 11 on the 7th. Kelvin Bryant in there for the Redskins. And here is Bryant. And Bryant breaks a couple of tackles and will have a first down. Shy of the 20-yard line. Reggie White on the tackle. And now for an NFL Today report, let's check in with Brent Musburger. Brent? Well, Dick, the Bears will have to come from behind again. It is Brent Fullwood going in from the two, and the Packers lead the Bears 14-7 in the second quarter. Back to Dick. So a surprise at Lambeau Field, and this game somewhat of a surprise, too. Redskins at 6-1, locked in a tie game, but a first down on Ryan's run. Rodgers back in the lineup. And George off the left side. Doesn't get much, and right now the Eagles, other than Bryant's run, effectively halting the running game. We're at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw, the 100th revival of this longtime rivalry. And we showed you slinging Sammy Baugh, Norm Van Brocklin. Of course, there have been a lot of others. There have been Norm Sneed, who played for both teams, and Sonny Jurgensen, who also played for both the Redskins and Eagles over the years. I've met Sonny Jurgensen. I've never met Slingin' Sammy. I'd love to. Second and eight. Art Punk goes the other way. Schrader's quick pass is incomplete. Terry, let me ask you something. Art Monk goes back and forth. Why does he do that? When Art Monk goes in motion, he has two responsibilities. Number one, 
he's either going to block the linebacker on the outside. Number two, he's going to blitz control if the linebacker disappears. Notice number 50 disappearing. That's Cobb. Now Schrader reads it, and he throws out in the flat, but the only problem was that Monk came back to the inside. So either blocks or he blitz controls. Schrader now is 0 for 5 with an interception. He is ice cold right now and faces a third down and nine at the 21. And nearly Ken Clark almost picked off another one. And he would have sailed into the end zone. And Schrader really struggling now. It'll be fourth down and the Eagles defense holds. Could have been disaster. As you can see, 71 Clark coming up to the outside. They had an eight-man rush on that time. Clark gets through. No one there. As you can see, the screen was intended for 85, Don Warren. But Clark cut in front of Warren and almost made the interception. Schrader now two for 13 for 27 yards and an interception. Steve Cox picking to Bobby Morse. out of bounds. Reggie Singletary got a hand on it, blocked the punt. And right now the Eagles defense is making it happen in a tie ball game against the Washington Redskins. Nothing fancy about this is Singletary number 68 just comes up the middle. Actually the center turned him loose and the up back turned him loose and he said look what I have. I've got a blocked punt. Up back that time should have taken Singletary on and prevented it. Once again Cox with plenty of time to punt, he thinks, but this up back, the guy that's in front of him that's there to protect him, let his man through. 11.06 remaining in the first half, and now the Eagles again in Redskin territory at the 30-yard line, first and 10. Cunningham steps up and going for Kenny Jackson, and it's picked off by the Redskins, and Barry Wilbur has the interception. His fifth of the year, and he now has the NFL lead with a big one in the end zone intended for Jackson. Well, one of the routes that the Eagles wanted to run outside with Jackson, 81, was the corner. He'll come down, drive to the inside to the post, turn Wilburn around, and then go back to the outside. Now, this is a poor route by Jackson. He knew that Wilburn was underneath him. He should have come underneath Wilburn and given Cunningham a nice target. Five interceptions on the year for Barry Wilburn, and it's Redskins ball. Back at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, tied at 7-7. All the scoring so far coming in the first quarter. Well, the Eagles right now are not cashing in on good opportunities, Terry. They uh, have the interception by Jerome Brown and they couldn't cash in there. They went for it on fourth down and failed on the incomplete pass. Then they blocked the punt, Singletary, and then the interception. So they've gotten close and sooner or later that can come back and haunt you. That's true. You, the opportunities are there and for a young team you have to cash them in. The fourth down, you know, we all agree with. The last pass was really not Cunningham's fault, although he shouldn't have thrown it. It was a poorly run route. So it's Redskins again on the 20. to throw on first down. Downfield is Didier, and he's double covered that time by Terry Hogue and Roy Nell Young. Story of our game thus far, Randall Cunningham, 50 yards rushing, of course, a big 45-yard run set up the opening touchdown for the Eagles. Schrader really has struggled, including an interception, and the Redskins' time of possession is not something to brag about, considering that they had the ball for 41 minutes against Buffalo last week. And why has Schrader been struggling? And he has missed his last seven passes of the ball game. Combination of pressure, multiple defenses, people in his face. He's not sure of himself right now, and that's the reason he's struggling. Second and ten at the 20. Thielman had a hand on the pressure and the pass intended for Gary Clark incomplete. Now for an NFL Today report, here's Brent Musburger. Well, Dick Ray Perkins continues to do an outstanding job with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. DeBerg here with the short scoring pass to Carter. 
and Tampa in St. Louis leading the Cardinals by 14. Let's go back to deck. Thank you very much, Brent. Schrader really in a drought. Faces a third and 10 at the 20 yard line with 10.45 to go in the first half. Lately, the Redskins haven't been able to run and they're struggling. Lost his footing going back and the pass is caught by Kelvin Bryant for a first down and out of bounds. Andre Waters making the tackle and a gain of 17 yards will bring it out to the 37 yard line. So offensively, not much to speak about except maybe for Kelvin Bryant thus far. Kelvin Bryant's a back. They want to rush the ball about 15 times a game and they want to get him the pass, get him the ball by the pass about six to eight times. It's an option route, meaning that Bryant comes down, picks up the guy that's on him and either goes inside or outside. Schrader reads it and gets him the football in good fashion that time. So Brian has been effective on the ground and as a pass receiver. Ricky Sanders has come in as a third wide receiver at first down for the Skins on their own 37. Sanders with the best speed of all of the Washington receivers. Schrader finds Clark and Clark gets away from a defender and nearly got away all the way the first down in the Philadelphia territory at the 44. Good for 19 yards with Terry Hogue, the free safety, finally making the tackle. Earlier in the game, we saw the quick hitch, five-yard turnaround. Now you're seeing one receiver come inside, which is Monk. He drags the coverage with him, and then Clark breaks out, and Schrader fires the ball to him. Excellent catch and run by Clark. Can't do it one way, you come back and you do it the other. When they stop the other, you come back and do it the way you started off. Elbert Fowles missed the tackle, so Clark with the big play. Now Didier is split out wide to the top of your screen. First and 10 on the Philadelphia 44. And the pass intended for Clark. Out of bounds and incomplete. Fowles was covering on the play. Schrader has gone to the air now, Terry, and George Rogers, as we said, 125 yards last week. Rogers, however, has gained only five yards the last six times he has run the ball. Well, now you see, you can really see the, the, what the offensive game plan is as this game moved on. It started out with the run, but now you see it focused primarily on the passing attack as they believe truly that they'll win this game with Schrader throwing the ball. That's not Gibbs' system, though, is it? No, it is not. Not if you look at last week's game when they rushed for 299 yards against Buffalo. Second and ten. Rodgers, as a receiver, held on to it and is out of bounds at the 37-yard line, knocked away by Alonzo Johnson, short of a first down by a couple of yards. One of the things that Schrader has been... Well, if he's ever been really at fault for anything, it's having too strong an arm. And even I've said that his strong arm is something that gets him in trouble because strong arm quarterbacks don't like to, they don't like to throw short. They're not that accurate at it. But here early in this in this drive, we've seen two real nice short passes that are right on the money. Third down and two on the Philadelphia 36. Art Monk down the middle, and Art Monk is stopped on a shoestring tackle at the 20-yard line by William Frizzell. It's taken a while for Art Monk to get untracked this year. 83 Sanders driving his man off, Royal Young. Now you're going to see Monk in the center of your screen take his man outside, then cut back inside on that little motion across, take him out, back inside, beats him, makes the completion. First catch of the game for Art Monk, good for 18 yards. He admitted to us yesterday that the strike affected him a great deal. He really hasn't been concentrating as well, worked on it this week. First and 10, Redskins threatening on the 19, and easy touchdown to Art Monk. As the defense had a mix-up in the secondary, and Art Monk catches a pass, 19 yards for the touchdown, and the Redskins lead it 13-7. to You can credit Schrader with this touchdown. As he comes out, he will look to Didier on the right side of the screen, sets his feet, pops, and now he turns around. Notice the strong safety and linebackers. They go over to cover Didier, turn around, Monk gets in behind him for the touchdown. Beautiful job by the quarterback, Schrader. And for Art Monk, that's his fourth touchdown reception of the season. And Ali Haji Sheik will attempt to give the Redskins a 14-7 lead. 
He does, with 8.56 remaining. So it's been kind of a bittersweet year for Art Monk with the strike and all, but he's caught the big one to give Washington the lead. Well, the last time the Redskins scored, 58 of the 80 yards were on the ground. All 80 yards on this drive were through the air as Schrader trying to get back the rhythm with a touchdown pass to Art Monk. And Steve Cox kicking now to Bobby Morse with a 14-7 game. Washington leading. Morse at the five-yard line. And Morse is brought back to the five and Dennis Woodbury with a great special teams hit. song that's the Notre Dame fight song and next Saturday on CBS college football the fighting Irish of Notre Dame big come from behind victory over Boston College yesterday they were down by 13 points Timmy Brown the Heisman candidate take on Alabama Alabama they beat LSU last night 22 to 10 Bobby Humphrey boy you talk about a great running back 161 yards and a TD ought to be a classic all right Alabama and Notre Dame on the five-yard line, first down, as Anthony Tony carries for the Eagles. Fight songs, huh? All right. Get those fight songs. That's what it's all about. Coleman and Manley combined to make the stop. Do you, do you know your fight song? Yes, I happen to know the Syracuse fight song. And they've been playing it a lot lately, as you might expect. Well, well my school does, doesn't have one yet. Gain of three. Second down and seven on the 13. Cunningham. And it was anyone's ball. Tony, the intended receiver, but it was tipped away by Neil Olkowitz, the middle linebacker. The pressure from the ends of Washington is up the field. And when we talk to Darwin, the left tackle, and Joe Conwell, the right tackle of Philadelphia, the thing they said that they had to do today against these two fine rushing ends of the Redskins was drop back and, pr and present a target so that they would have to go around them and then they would allow them to go ahead and take them whichever way they can. Third down and seven, there are four wide receivers in there, including Chris Carter and Greg Garrity for the Eagles. Cunningham's pass, incomplete thrown behind Garrity and defending on the play for the Redskins was Dennis Woodbury. So it'll be fourth down and John Telchik will come in and kick. So Schrader, before had the drought, he had thrown seven incompletions and an interception. Now Cunningham is 0 for 7 with an interception. Well, it's confidence. We, Schrader's found the confidence. He drove him down 80 yards earlier in this game. Cunningham's scrambling. He had the confidence. Now he's not uh, having any success at all offensively, and so therefore he's losing confidence. Telchik from the goal line. Yarber. At the 38. And upended. Just shy of midfield by Seth Joyner. 49-yard kick. And Joyner, the man who made the hit, is shaken up. Well, if Schrader has the confidence, this could be a big pressure defensive sequence coming up for Philadelphia. Randall Cunningham talking with... Uh, Junior Tartal Atazi about what the Eagles might do when they have the ball, but right now the Redskins with their best starting field position on their own 49-yard line with 7.55 to go in the first half. This could be an important sequence series right here. 14 to 7, the Redskins lead. Eagles scored first today. Got a hold of him, and Rogers gets into Eagle territory. Clyde Simmons then makes the stop, and a pickup of about three on the play. If there's one, if there's one weakness in the Philadelphia Eagle defensive uh, uh, set of things, it would have to be the linebackers. Good linebackers, but not overpowering linebackers such as the Bears. And in this 40, in this 46, so much is expected of him. Reichenbach, 55, a good linebacker, not a great linebacker. Gary Cobb replaces Dwayne Giles at right linebacker for Philadelphia, second and seven. Schrader flushed out of the pocket and being chased and goes out of bounds smartly as he saw and heard Reggie White coming in and advancing and a pickup of nine yards and that will be good enough for a Washington first down. 
It's a nice cool day and I imagine Reggie White 92 and the entire defense of the Eagles and of the Redskins are, go are going to appreciate this in the fourth quarter because if these two quarterbacks continue to get outside, their responsibility is they have to chase them. And that means they've got to be in good shape. As you can see down on his knees, they're getting his breath. So this cool weather is going to help him just do that, chase the quarterback. Mike Pence replaces Jerome Brown at right tackle for Philadelphia. First and 10 at the 39 of the Eagles. Schrader looking every way and then dumps it over and nearly intercepted that time by Seth Joyner. Pass was intended for George Rogers. Eagles have made advances. They're three and four coming into this ball game, including two in a row. But Buddy Ryan didn't make any bones about the kind of team he was playing today. He thinks that the Washington Redskins are the best team, not only in the NFC. That says a lot better than the Bears, although he might have some prejudice there, but the NFL as well. Well, he said that, and he also said this is the biggest game of my career. So those two tie together makes this a great game. Kelvin Bryan in the game now for the Redskins. Second down and ten. Complete intended for Bryant. Don Warren went in motion and all of a sudden stopped, and there might have been a mix up on the right side of the line. When Warren went in motion, he actually pulled Didier off the in line. In motion, number 86. And it was Didier. Declined, third down. Declined the penalty, third down. Exactly what the Redskins wanted that time when they took. Warren in motion to give help on White with Didier and, and Warren taking him allowed Schrader plenty of time to go back and pick up uh, Kelvin Bryant coming across the middle, who was, by the way, wide open. Third down and 10 at the 39-yard line. Just under seven minutes remaining in the first half. Redskins lead the Eagles 14-7. to seven. Schrader is hit. As he lets go of the ball by Clyde Simmons with good pressure. Boy, the Eagle front four is awfully tough. They haven't been kept out at all today, really. 86 Dieter coming over to help Schrader. Now look what Reggie White does. Gets underneath Didier and actually drives him back and then gets a piece of Schrader, preventing Schrader from being able to follow through and, and throw the football away can do it. Can you imagine that? Gets up underneath the guy and drives him back 10 yards and still gets in and gets his hand on the quarterback. So Steve Cox will punt from the 45-yard line. Morse is back. And Morse is going to let this one fly. And it cannot be saved. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. And it was Clarence Bone who tried to keep it in play. So it'll be Eagles ball on the 20-yard line. And next Sunday, let's look ahead. The NFL today will start it all off at 12.30 Eastern time. Dallas against New England. The Cowboys right now are in second in the division. New England, contender in the AFC East. Detroit and Washington. The Redskins will be back home at RFK Stadium against the Lions. The Rams against the St. Louis Cardinals. Two teams that are struggling right now. And then in the second half of our doubleheader, these matchups, the Giants against these Eagles. And we'll be with you at Candlestick Park. You see the 49ers and the Saints. First and 10 at the 20 for the Eagles. Cunningham up the middle. Finds his tight end, John Spagnola. First time he's gotten the ball today. Todd Bowles brings him down at the 28-yard line. One of the things that Washington will do with their linebackers on first down is they will take them out and play the little simple zones. And that pass is a good pass for Cunningham and the tight end to get your confidence back because Spagnola comes off, reads the linebackers, and sits down in between them. Second and two. And this time, Byers carries, and he's cut immediately, and a fine play by the Redskin line. Dave Butts, who's made a history out of making those kinds of plays. It'll be third down and still two yards to go. You can't run dive plays unless your guards, Baker and Schreiber, can get underneath Grant and Butts the tackles of the Redskins. And what happened is, is Butts, that time penetrated, Grant penetrated, got underneath their guards and knocked them back. And there were, therefore, there was no place for the running back to go. Marcus Cook comes in for Dexter Manley. Third down and two. Eagles on their 28-yard line. And Tony carries and, and now mix up 
and a loose ball, and it's picked up by Darrell Green, and he'll go in for the touchdown. Darrell Green took the ball away, I believe, from Anthony Tony, stripped him of the ball, and went in for the touchdown, and the Redskins lead it 20-7. to Short yardage offense, crucial. You need to make the first down. There's the handoff, and it's a good handoff, but actually, 71, man comes inside. He knocks the ball out, allowing Green to scoop it up and then run into the end zone. So credit man with being the one responsible for the fumble. And a fumble recovery at a touchdown, 26-yard run by Darrell Green. He still has the football, and it's now 20-7. to Ali Haji Sheep. Silence this crowd. The kick is perfect, and the Redskins now lead it 21 to 7. Darrell Green with his second career touchdown with 525 remaining in the first half. The Eagles have turned the ball over twice. And when the Redskins get the edge as they have right now, they're near unbeatable. Well that's I would say 50 and 2 is pretty, that's a pretty good ratio, 50 and 2 when you have a positive and plus in the turnover ratio, not bad. Puts a lot of pressure now on Philadelphia, and I think you pointed it out early after the Eagles took a 7-0 lead, and the Redskins drove 80 yards in 13 plays right after that scoring drive to quell the crowd and come back to tie it up. The crowd has never been in the game since, and now it'll take a, a lot to bring them back to. That's true, Dick, and another thing that, that, that we have to see a change now in the offensive philosophy of the Eagles. They're too conservative, very simple, very basic. I say now you get out and you do play action with Cunningham outside and put a lot of pressure on the secondary of the Redskins. So far, they've been very, well, the old phrase, vanilla, just simple up the middle and a little drop back and a little pop. But, Big things have to happen to them, and you you create your own breaks. You can make things happen, but you have to change the offense. You have it in your offense, so go ahead and change it. Bobby Morse will be back, and Cox will kick it off for the Redskins. Line drive kick, and Carter, Chris Carter inside the 10. Trying to get some running room, but he can't, and he is brought down at the 20-yard line by Kurt Govea. One of, the more, one of the more interesting matchups today is the classic is when we have Quick on Daryl Green, 28. Two really great performers. And I don't use the word great that often, but two really great performers. And sometime today we're going to see Kent Randall Cunningham go to Quick, his best receiver, deep. The Eagles have plenty of time here in this first half, 5.15, and the whistle blows. And the play is brought back to the marker now. And the penalty is called against Adam Schreiber, the left guard. We were led to believe that this would be kind of a wide open game as far as the Eagles were concerned because they didn't feel they were going to run much and would have to use a lot of screen passes and, you know, try to take advantage of uh, some of the weaknesses that the Eagles thought they saw in the Redskins secondary. It's a young offensive team and the bad things have happened to them here ever since that, that opening drive when Count Cunningham runs, scrambled out of there for 45 yards and they're a little uptight. They've got to relax now and just let it happen. First and 15 at the 15. Anthony Tony pecks his way forward to the 17. Monty Coleman making the stop. Monty Coleman who has not really had a complete season and uh, says he enjoys starting a lot more than coming off the bench and a good reason why. Well, one of the things they told us was that we need 16 games out of Coleman. He's a guy we've got to have the games out of. Well, they're not they're not going to get 16. If they get anything, it'll be 15. He says it's hard to get the adrenaline going when you're coming off the bench and you're standing around and they don't run plays at you for a while. Randall Cunningham looking left going right. He has Kenny Jackson and the Redskins may have come up with the ball. Let's see. Ty goes to the receiver. Barry Wilburn was covering and I think that the tug of war is still going on between Jackson and Wilburn. You don't often see this. The tie goes to the receiver and what they have to determine is did in fact Wilburn make the catch? It looks like it's Eagles ball. I, I 
happen to believe that Wilburn makes the interception and Jackson takes it away. There's Wilburn with his right arm underneath Jackson. He has his ball, the ball around him, but watch this. Jackson rolls over and he takes the ball back from Wilburn. Look at this. Now Wilburn has the ball, but now Jackson ends up with it. 53-yard play and they're still going at it. It'll be a reception for Kenny Jackson. He caught a 70-yard touchdown pass last week against the Cardinals. And this crowd is on its feet again. Cunningham has the Eagles at the Redskins 38. First and 10 with four minutes to go. And now the Redskins quickly want to call a timeout. And they'll get it. The first timeout called by the Redskins in the first half. The Eagles have only one left. Hey, come here, says Joe Gibbs. You can read his lips. Hey, come here and explain to me why we're not going to the cameras up there. Look, he's pointing upstairs. Hey, let's look at this thing and make sure that our boy Wilburn didn't make the catch. It was our ball. We made the catch. You gave it to them. But I think you're right. I think Wilburn had the inside play and made the interception and on the play the rollover it was Jackson who took the ball away or well, at least got half of it. If you can get away with it if you're strong enough to do it do it because this is what happens that's why a receiver has to learn never quit never give up but Wilburn actually has his right hand inside and he's the guy he's the one that actually had control of the football now you're gonna see there's the wrestle look at this Wilburn's got the football, Jackson's taking it away from him. <laughs> you don't often see a, a play that close where both of them kind of have half of the ball. It's amazing that the refs are sitting there watching them roll down the field trying to <laughs> determine which one of them had the ball. Now Gibbs is furious because he wants to go upstairs and he wants to look at a replay of it to determine whether or not in fact Wilburn did make the catch. The replay booth called us and said it was conclusive that the Eagles had the ball. So that's that and it's Philadelphia's possession. First and 10 on the 28, on the draw play, Keith fires, gets to the 25, a gain of three, Mel Kaufman on the stop. This is the 100th meeting between these two clubs. Veterans Stadium, Philadelphia, and a capacity crowd on hand to see whether the Eagles are the real thing against one of the powers in the league, the Redskins. But as you see, the Redskins in front, 21-7. Taking advantage of a big turnover with Darrell Green returning a fumble 26 yards for a touchdown. Second down and seven at the 25. Junior Tautolatazi is in the ball game now. And the pass intended for Tautolatazi off his hands. And Mel Kaufman was covering him on that play. Eagles had two golden opportunities early. Once when Jerome Brown picked off a pass and the Eagles had it on the 17 of the Redskins. A fourth and two went by the boards for the Eagles. And then a blocked punt by Reggie Singletary of the Eagles. Once again gave Philadelphia the ball in Redskin territory and then Wilburn intercepted. So two chances went by the board. Now it's third and seven at the 25. Hoffman tried to get in on a blitz inside. Let's see if he was drawn off, however. Encroachment number 55. And that'll make it third and two. Well, the success that the Redskins have had in the second quarter has been blitzing Randall Cunningham. And all they're doing is sending four linemen and two linebackers. Very simple blitz to pick up. And what is happening on the Eagles is they're not picking it up with their backs. They're running them out on routes. And Cunningham and the backs have got to get together and make those adjustments and get the ball to one another. They're going to take the penalty to make it third down and two. And they'll spot it just inside the 20. Actually, it's closer to third and one huh, from the looks of things. Isn't that interesting? Why not stay where you are and go ahead and throw the football and have the first down? Two, two shots to make seven yards. Now it's third and two, and we know what they did on fourth down. Third and one, actually, if you look at the ball marking, and they don't make it, Marcus Cook. Anthony Tony got the call and Marcus Cook and company. A whole bunch of white shirts in there and now it'll be fourth down and now it's fourth and two. Goal line defense by the Redskins. They bring in 74 Marcus Cook. He penetrates inside as you can see David Little coming to kick out 
But Cook penetrates. Gosh, looks like a big bear jumping up to the outside, making the stop. Well, now the Eagles are going to try and come away with something out of this. A 37-yard field goal attempt by Paul McFadden is upcoming right now. McFadden, 0 for 2 last week, is 6 for 10 on the season. And the barefooted kicker is successful with 2.33 to go, and it is now a 21 to 10 ball game. Paul McFadden, a 37-yard field goal. You gotta wonder a little bit, Terry, where well, the Eagles have not been able to run it all up the middle today, try to do that on third down and one. Well, I, I, I'm wondering, it's second and seven, and they take the penalty uh, and go ahead and, and, or, and take the uh, a third down and two play. Why not just stay second and seven, repeat the down, and have two opportunities? Either they feel like they can't handle the blitz, or they feel like they can go ahead and make the first down, which they, of course, they didn't do. And McFadden had to kick the field goal. So I question whether or not they shouldn't have taken the penalty. Just leave it alone and, and have the opportunity to throw the ball. Coming up at halftime, Brent and Irv will have scores and highlights from around the league. And also, they'll take a special look at the new style of luxury that's come to the NFL, the skyboxes. That's coming up at halftime here on CBS. John Telshik will be kicking off. Back is Keith Griffin for the Redskins, who is the leading rusher amongst the regulars and has not been in the backfield yet today. Can you get a, a line on how this game is going? Because the Eagles have come back there. They've made some plays. The Redskins have made the big plays on special teams, or at least on the turnovers. Well, the, that's true. You, the thing they have to do is forget about the missed opportunities now they that's why they took the field goal we've got to get something that gives them a little bit of momentum Jackson making that catch gives Cunningham the confidence now and so they they feel like well we're back in this thing 21 to 10 we can come back from that came back last week against the Cardinals and a swift kick out of bounds so Telchik didn't get much of that Cleveland leading Atlanta 14 to 3 in the third quarter. Kansas Kick City out of bounds. The ball goes over Pittsburgh. The 35, first and 10. They're going to spot the ball at the 35. Tampa Bay leading St. Louis. And it looks like the Buccaneers are Ooh. going to be around to stay. Hmm, there's a shocker. Colts leading San Diego. Dickerson already over 100 yards in the first half of that game. You give me $1.4 million a year, and you're looking at the fastest running back in the world. Well, let's not, let's not <laughs> exaggerate here. Well, that's true. How about Boy, the arm? I'll take the arm. I sure would like to <laughs> try to <laughs> run with it. Ball at the 35, following the ball kicked out of bounds, and George Rogers on first down picks up 11 as he moves it to the 46-yard line. Mike Reichenbach making the tackle as we're getting close to the two-minute warning. So we saw an example of that new rule where they well, spotted the 35. Counter gap now. Step, step, back. Guard pulls, cuts inside, tackle. Jacoby Coles kicks out, blocks down. The old counter trap, something the Redskins have been doing for years and years. There's the step, there's the setup. Rogers back, gets up inside, and Jacoby leads him down the field for the first down. Well, we've seen mostly passes. We haven't seen Rodgers running so far. He's gained only 49 yards, but we have our two-minute warning upon us. We've had our two-minute warning, and the Redskins with the ball on their own 45-yard line, leading 21 to 10. In the first quarter, Jay Schrader had an equal amount of rushing to passing, but it's been two to one ratio in favor of the pass in the second quarter. Well, he's come to life here in the second quarter. As you know, he missed those two long passes earlier, one to Clark and then one to Didier, so he's back. I look for him to throw the football, move it down the field. Ricky Sanders is in the game as a third wide receiver. He's at the top of his screen. First and 10 at the 45. Schrader guns it downfield. He's going for Sanders, who had it and knocked away. Terry Holt and Elbert Fowles defending against Ricky Sanders, and there you see why the Redskins know he has the best speed of their receivers. Anytime a quarterback throws the ball, the one thing we're taught in training camp and all our professional lives is when it's up in the air, we're the ones that are going to come down with it. Sanders is actually well covered, as you see Fowles is trailing him. Now, Schrader with that great arm does absolutely no fear, throws it in behind 
as you can see, hold their 34 right through Sanders' hands. Redskins still have two timeouts remaining. The Eagles just won. Second and 10 with 153 on the clock. They give it to Bryant, and Bryant goes down. And a loss of two yards on the play. It was Reggie White who leads the NFL in quarterback sacks with seven. And there came storming in against the run. Golden opportunity here for the Philadelphia to call timeout, stop the clock, force Phillips, force Washington to throw the football. Incompletion, four seconds go off the clock. You get it with a hundred, with a minute, 25 seconds left. Instead, the clock's running down. Well, uh, they must be banking on stopping the Redskins here and then using the timeout on offense. Well, that's good. If you only have five seconds, what good's it going to do? Third down and 12. They put the pressure on Schrader, and Schrader throws it away. Intercepted by Roynell Young. Roynell Young to the 35. And he laterals it, and a loose ball, and the Redskins claim they have it, but no, it is Philadelphia ball. A risky play indeed for Roynell Young once he had the ball in Redskin territory at the 30 to try to get more out of it. It'll be Philadelphia's ball on Roynell Young's interception. Well, you can attribute this interception to pressure on the quarterback. Schrader can't get in stride and gun the football the way he can. So you're going to see it's just simple rush. Now off the, off the very end, as you're going to see, Schrader has a man at his feet. He can't follow through. So that ball is actually sails out of his hands right into Ronell Young's hand. who's a fine job of running with the football, but almost made a big mistake when he decides to go ahead and lateral. A 32-yard return. He tried to get it to Frizzell, and Frizzell couldn't hold on to it. So the Eagles already in field goal range. Still with one timeout to go. 53 seconds to go. Trailing the Redskins 21 to 10. Cunningham in trouble. And down he goes back at the 40. And now the Eagles are out of field goal range. So a timely defensive play by Washington. Charles Mann and Darrell Grant. Well, the, bat, the best pass defense always, of course, is a pass rush. You put pressure on a quarterback like man's doing 71 there you do that you don't have to worry about whether or not your guys are throwing interceptions first sack of the ball game for either side second down and 19. Cunningham back at midfield he fires and Kenny Jackson has it and he's got it at the 15 and the clock stops with 23 seconds to go a 24 yard play Bowles knocked him out of bounds. You get an idea of what he's looking at. And Manley coming up the top of the screen. He penetrates from the top side. Flushes Cunningham out of the pocket. Cunningham picks up Jackson. Makes the, makes the throw. Now you can see Jackson on the corner. Fine catch. Gets both feet in. Gets out of bounds. First and ten Eagles on the Redskins. 15. 23 seconds to go in the half. Cunningham's pass is... Jackson let's see if they call it it is caught by Jackson and a timeout called by the Eagles with 18 seconds to go Terry a big turnover here if the Eagles can capitalize they have no timeouts remaining what's in store for them here well they've got to throw it in the end zone it's second down two yards to go for a first and that's no good they have got to throw the next three plays second third and fourth down or if they don't go for the field goal, they got to put the ball in the end zone. They have to throw it. In a lot of ways, uh, this is the game right here. If the Eagles uh, don't get anything out of it, it could be a long haul for them. Well, this is crucial because they passed up two golden opportunities, and they don't want to miss out here, and they really don't want a field goal. They want a touchdown. Second and goal on the one, and here is a fade pass to Mike Quick. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Grabbed it over Darrell Green. A six-yard catch, his first of the day for Mike Quick. Well, when, when you really need someone, you go to the guy you have the most confidence in, regardless of whether or not he's made a catch in this drive. He had not made a catch, but boy, when they needed it, Cunningham put it up. 
Quick made the catch. McFadden looking for the 17th point. And the kick is good with 14 seconds to go. Mike Quick with the touchdown reception, but the big one was the 24-yard pass to Kenny Jackson, and it was all set up by Roynell Young's interception of Schrader's pass. Quick ran the same pass that Greg Garrity ran last week against St. Louis when Cunningham drilled the ball. This time he notices that Quick has his man beaten. He's even with him. He lays it up and says, go get it. Offensive receivers should be able to outjump defensive backs. Especially when you're 6'2 and the defensive back is 5'8, as was the case right there. So the Eagles have come back. They were trailing 21 7. They got a field goal from McFadden when their drive stalled, and now the touchdown pass. And now Griffin goes back deep for the Redskins. And Telshik will be kicking off. Don't forget at halftime, a lot of scores and highlights. See what's been going on with the Green Bay Packers who took the lead over the Chicago Bears. See if that game has gone the way it started. Brent Nerv will have it from the studio. Zelchik with an end-over-end -end kick, and it's going to be Griffin at the four. Griffin is stopped at the 33-yard line, and making the play for the Eagles is Russell Gary. That's how much time remains, eight seconds. The Redskins have two timeouts left, but that may not be much of a factor at this point. No, because if, if Schrader throws a 40-yard pass right now, the clock would expire. Time he's set up, four and four and a half seconds to get the pass off. The pass would have to travel 35, 40 yards in the air. You make the catch, you hit the ground, then we're into the halftime. So right now it's really, it serves no, no purpose other than maybe he wants to, you know, Get some yardage, get a little confidence. You know, you can get all of that out of eight seconds. Well, the crowd was all turned on when the Eagles scored first. And then they were quiet most of this half. But you'll hear them cheer when this first half comes to a close. Schrader will run it out of bounds. And that's the end of the first half. The Eagles have come back to trail by only four points. the end of the first half here at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia with the score, the Washington Redskins 21, the Philadelphia Eagles 17. CBS Sports CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota, setting the standard for quality and value. AT&T, the right choice. And by Budweiser, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. Back here at Veterans Stadium, Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw with the Redskins leading 21-17, to and it's been very difficult, Terry, so far to get a handle on this game. <laughs> well, you've had momentum change, it's gone back and forth, and I think you can attribute that to the defensive changes. They've so many defenses that these quarterbacks are having to change their offensive attack each time they go out there. They can't get a handle on it because it's too confusing. So the team that can establish some sort of momentum or emotion, whatever have you, may have an edge in the that, second half. Exactly. It's one of those old things you say, well, whoever has it at the end of the game very well could be the team that wins it. Let's take a look at a couple of statistics here and of course time of possession the Redskins live by it and right now they have a very slim edge over the Philadelphia Eagles so you were right they're not relying on the run they're throwing to stay in this ball game. Turnovers have played a role in this game as the Eagles have capitalized twice on Philadelphia turnovers and the Eagles have only capitalized once on two turnovers by the Washington Redskins and of course one big turnover resulted in a Washington touchdown maybe the difference of the game and that of course was Daryl Green's play. Yeah, Daryl Green's play on the on the Tony fumble as you can see in the top left of your screen Mann 71 Charles Mann swings the arm out knocks the ball loose from Tony and Green stands right there and says hello football and then this guy's a, a a 9-1 sprinter. And of course, the touchdown to Quick just before the end of the half. Well, this is a great play that was set up by Jackson's fine reception. He out jumps Green, makes the touchdown. 21-17, Washington leads. So now we start the second half. The Redskins will be receiving. John Telshik will be kicking off, and Keith Griffin is back for the Redskins. 
deep kick by Telchik. And Griffin decides to run it out. And still going is Griffin, and Frizzell finally brings him down at the 25-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will defend against the Redskins right now. Well, when the Redskins have been in front at the half, good things have happened, 53-3 and three hmm. in the last five years. Well, then they should feel awful comfortable right now, realizing that when they're leading at halftime, they're 53-3, and three. not think, bad. You think they feel comfortable? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I don't think so either. Art Monk goes out to the left. Jay Schrader had his cool moments and then hot moments, but still 7 for 26 at the half. George Rogers. And Rogers is stopped, not before he picks up eight yards. Andre Waters and Terry Hope, the two safeties, make the stop on Rogers. Well, I got to believe that Joe Gibbs is pretty upset, and he had a few words with his team at halftime, disappointed, of course, and, and giving up the turnovers, but not being able to run the football, which is exactly what Gibbs wants to do coming out here in the second half, says, okay, Rogers, you left over Jacoby. Get some yardage. Second and two on the 33-yard line. Time of possession practically even. That's not good news for Washington. We go to Rodgers again, and Rodgers close to first down yardage. Clyde Simmons making the tackle. Very close. He might have been short by less than a yard. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Philadelphia Eagles and the National Football League is prohibited. Rodgers was short. It'll be third down and one. And there's Reggie Branch, who is the short yardage blocker. On the goal line and short yardage plays. Jay Schrader didn't like what he saw and calls a timeout. So an early timeout, less than two minutes into this third quarter. Called by the Redskins, and we'll be back to Veterans Stadium after this. We're back here in an early timeout by the Redskins. Did you spot why, Terry? Well, it's third and one, and what... See, the Redskins have been using three tight ends, and what Philadelphia countered with this time was five defensive linemen. This is an ideal situation for a play-action pass. and he stopped behind the line and a loss on the play of a yard and a half. Seth Joyner and Gary Cobb making the tackle and Jerome Brown also in on the play. Anytime you see a goal line defense and third and short yardage, an ideal play is to play action pass up inside off of a goal line run that you've shown earlier and come out with a pass and if you hit it, you hit it for a big yardage. That time the Redskins you know, a little bit of pride may have gotten in their way then. They said, by golly, we're going to jam this down your throat, and it backfired on them. Cox will be kicking, and Bobby Morris is back for the Philadelphia Eagles. They blocked one of Cox's punts before, and on the run, Morris at the 35 is hit by Vernon Dean, and a penalty marker is down as well. And we may have a clip in there, 34-yard kick. And Morris brought it back to the 37th. Illegal block in the back, number 95, first down. That was Jody Schultz. Next week, it'll be Alabama and Notre Dame. And the Crimson Tide, as you talked about before, upset over LSU, first loss of the year for the Tigers, and the big one next week. Well, Alabama beat LSU in LSU, and this is the ninth visit down there since 69 that Alabama's never beaten LSU, or LSU's never beaten Alabama at home. At Notre Dame with Tim Brown, nearly 300 all-purpose yards yesterday and a great comeback against Boston College next Saturday. Cunningham, and it's intercepted by Todd Bowles as he overthrows Mike Quick, and Bowles picks it off at the 40-yard line of Washington, and that is the third turnover by the Philadelphia Eagles and the second interception thrown by Cunningham. Ideal situation for Cunningham this time is Bowles, 23, the free safety. He has to cover quick man for man. He's open there, but a poorly thrown ball by Cunningham ends up being intercepted by Bowles. 
young quarterbacks sometimes have a hard time hiding how they feel about interceptions. I know I did. I held my head low. He just stands there and says, I don't believe this. For Bowles, his third interception of the year. Wilburn picked one off earlier, his fifth. First and ten at the 45. Redskins with the lead and the ball. Schrader with a quick toss to Monk. First down, and Art Monk gets into Eagles territory and knocked out of bounds at the 41 by Roynell Young. Andre Waters also in on the play. Well, there's the hitch that we saw earlier in the first quarter where it was almost intercepted. This time, as you can see, Monk will drive off. Notice the separation that the corner gives Monk. Monk reads it, comes down, stops, makes the hitch. Young's off of him too far first down. Had Young come up that time, Dick, and pressed uh, Monk, then Monk would have gone deep. Buck with a 14-yard gain. He caught a 19-yard touchdown pass in the first half. Kelvin Bryant in the backfield for the Redskins. First and 10 on the Eagles, 40. And Bryant gets the call and is hit. Picked up a yard. Reggie White, Dwayne Giles combined to make the tackle on Kelvin Bryant. Second down and nine, and William Frizzell, former Detroit Lion, comes in the game. And, of course, Eagle coaches said when Frizzell is in there with a lot of strength, he'll probably be watching Art Monk one-on-one. -on -one. He matches up well with Monk. Monk's extremely strong with the receiver, and so is Frizzell. Schrader under pressure, throws the ball away, and a penalty marker is down. Reichenbach came in, and a flag is thrown. Normally that's holding against the Redskins and the offensive team. Of course, he threw the ball to no one. They're going to call him for intentional grounding, loss of down. and Intentional right. grounding, number 10, loss of down. Fidel. Schrader under a lot of pressure this time, setting up, trying to get the ball down the middle. Notice he looks inside. Reichenbach puts the heat on him, and he just throws it over May and Tillman's head. No one there. Lost it down at the spot where he threw the ball. And he did it to avoid a sack, pure and simple. So it's third down and 20, back at midfield for Schrader. Four minutes gone by here in the third quarter, 21 to 17. The Redskins lead the Eagles. Sanders in as a third wide receiver. Schrader almost lost his footing. Going for Art Monk, and he overthrows him. He had beat Cedric Brown, the nickelback. And Schrader is just wondering what might have been on a great pass pattern to Monk. The matchup from the slot. That means that Monk is inside an outside receiver. It gives him man-for-man -man coverage by Brown, 23. He's beaten right now. This is the third long pass that Jay Schrader's thrown in which he had a receiver open for a touchdown, but just simply overthrew his receiver. Ideal matchup. You just don't get those kinds of matchups that often. And when you do, you got to cash them in. Steve Cox will boot it away. Bobby Morris is back for the Eagles. Good high kick and a fair catch called for by Morse at the 11-yard line. 39-yard kick, but no advance, and the Eagles are backed up when we come back to Veterans Stadium. Jay Schrader is anything but pleased right now. Other than that scoring drive when he completed five out of eight with the touchdown pass to Monk, Schrader is three for 21 the rest of the game. Eagles on their 11-yard line. the middle to Keith Byers and Darrell Grant making the tackle. Earlier in the game, Cunningham ran for 50 yards, 45 on one play. The three regular running backs for the Eagles have averaged less than two yards a carry, so it's been Cunningham or no count on the ground for the Eagles today. They really haven't tried to establish any type of running game. Actually, that dive play that th you just saw was a play they told us they wanted to run a lot today. This is second and a half, and it's the first time we've seen it. Second and six on the 15. Penalty flags fly. Keith Byers doesn't get much. Barry Wilburn forcing from 
to the secondary making the tackle. Offside, number 51, second down. Bonnie Coleman, Cleveland way ahead of Atlanta. Brown starting to sizzle, tight game in the third quarter in Kansas City. Tampa Bay, they're for real, and they beat the, lead the St. Louis Cardinals in the surprise in Buffalo, leading the Broncos in the third quarter. Colts also appear to be for real. Vikings looking to get back in the playoff race, and the Packers still have the lead over Chicago at halftime in Green Bay. Second down and one following the penalty. Junior Tautolatazi is in the ball game, and the give is to Tautolatazi, and he'll get the first down. At the 23, Monty Coleman making the tackle. The Eagles started from their 11, and they get some running room now. Left side of your screen, you're going to see Coleman, 51, coming inside. Tula Talsi takes the ball, dodges out to the right side, but Coleman is right in his hip pocket and makes the sack. Well, not a sack, but stops him for no gain. Coleman having his best year. He's had most of tackles of any Redskin defender behind the line of scrimmage. Tony tries to protect the ball, and Anthony Tony with an impressive run. Brings it out to the 29-yard line. Mel Kaufman and Todd Bowles make the tackle on Tony, who scored an eagle touchdown. There's that dive play we were talking about. Simple little handoff down the line of scrimmage. You give it to him, and then Tony either pops inside the guard or outside the tackle. That time he went outside and got seven yards. Are we seeing a little ball control from the Eagles here, even though they're trailing? I think what they're trying to do is show run so they can get some passing right now. Cunningham, they don't believe, has had the time to throw. He falls down, and Byers picks it up and gets a first down on a busted play. Monty Coleman making the tackle on Byers, but it's a first down for the Philadelphia Eagles out to the 35. One of the things you have to have is presence of mind and coolness under fire when things don't go well. As you can see, Cunningham coming out, trips, has presence of mind, keeps his cool, flips it to Byers. Byers gets the first down. They ought to put that one in the playbook. I don't think so. <laughs> Eagles on their own 35 with 7.50 remaining in the third quarter. Now Cunningham unleashes it, and he hits Kenny Jackson. And another first down, short of midfield, a good slam in, good for 12 yards. Wilburn defending on the play. When we talked to Wilburn last night, the thing he told us about routes, the hardest routes to cover were the in routes. Why? Because they come down, and when they cut in, they're running away from you, and you have to try to catch up with them. Virtually impossible. Wilburn with an interception today, and... Five on the season, but the Eagles moving the ball. They started from their 11-yard line, and Anthony Tony breaks Monty Coleman's tackle and gets into Redskin territory. Another first down to the 39. Anthony Tony showing a slashing, dashing style that once again is reminiscent of tailbacks, not fullbacks. Cutting in, cutting out, showing a real dashing, darting type of running. Look at this. Outside, inside, breaks tackles. Charles Mann made the stop. The Eagles controlling the ball in masterful fashion. First and 10 on the Redskin 40. 14 yard pickup that time for Tony. Byers in motion. Cunningham almost tripped. Being chased by Monty Coleman and the pass is incomplete. Coming up was Todd Bowles on the pass intended for Byers and a scramble by Cunningham there and the chase was on. Penalty marker is now. There is no flag. He threw the ball from behind the line. Ball was thrown from behind the line. Here's the scramble by Cunningham. Well, a defensive end's nightmare. He does a fine job of getting up the field, and actually that time, as you could see, he gets... As, as Darwin pushed him wide, he actually pushed him into Cunningham, but Cunningham gets away from him, goes downfield, and tries desperately to get, get a pass down there and make a completion. Manley was on the chase. Dexter with a couple of sacks last week. So far, 
man is the only sack today for the Redskins. Second and ten. And another flag and moving on the line. It was the right side of the Philadelphia Ball offensive start, line. Number 63. And it was Ron Baker, down. their 10-year veteran. The Eagles are looking for their third victory in a row. It's been two years since they've managed that hat trick. They're also trying to square things against the Redskins on the season, who won the season opener 34-24. But the Redskins are a very good road club. In fact, the last five years, the best road record in the league. And they've won the last two here at Veterans Stadium. Second and 15. On the 45. And Cunningham goes down, and it was Neil Olkowitz who came in to stop the run, and instead he stopped Cunningham, and that's the second sack of the game by Washington. It's blitz. Notice the blitz. Walton comes up inside. Okowitz up inside. It's just simple six-man rush. Should be picking up, taken up easily, but it isn't. Okowitz comes free. As you see, he and Walton coming in there. Okowitz makes the sack. A loss of seven on the play, and they've backed up the Eagles back into their own territory to the 49-yard line, and they have third and 21 coming up. A young quarterback has to notice the safeties when they come up tight and get out of those things and make the right audibles. And on the draw play, it's Anthony Tony, And Tony gets back into Washington territory at the 48. Mel Kaufman on the tackle, and they've got to separate some of the players now. Once again, started early in the ball game when Randall Cunningham was knocked down. This time, Keith Byers was in the middle of it, but Cunningham missed a play in the fourth quarter when he was hit hard by a Redskin defender. That's in the first quarter of the game. And the tempers have flared from time to time since. Fourth down, John Telchik will kick. Eric Yarber is back for the skin. the kicker penalty or running into the kicker we'll see which way he picked up the flag the official after he let it go and the kick is down at the 10 yard line a 37 yard kick Terry Orr came in and got a piece of Telsha but they rule that Orr got a piece of the ball and so it's not running into the kicker right if you get a piece of the football you can go ahead and hit the punter all you want as you can see, Wilburn coming up from the right side of your screen. There's Orr, highly extended to the point where the ball's going. Gets his hand on the ball. Now he can kick. Now he's allowed to hit the punter. The official threw the flag, and then he picked it up. And a great kick for Philadelphia here. Last series, the Eagles started from their 11, got down to the Redskin 39, and now it's Washington starting from their own 11-yard line with 5.06 to go in the third quarter, leading the Eagles 21 to 17. George Rogers on first down gets a couple and that's all. Without question, the Eagles defense against the rush has improved considerably since the early going. Making the tackle, Reggie White and Ken Clark, the left side of the line. Reggie White who's had a heck of a a game. You know what he does? He takes two players out of your offense and you focus them on him, frees up Jerome Brown or Clark. And the nice thing about their defense is they have White on the left and Joe, Jerome Brown at right tackle. You can't go right or left without having a big horse sitting right there waiting on you. White Simmons has come on at right end. Kelvin Bryan in the ball game, second down and seven at the 14 of Washington. Traders pass to Clark. He's got it. Trying to get away and he gets the first down. Out to the 24-yard line, Clyde Simmons making the tackle on Gary Clark. Ideally, whenever I was having a hard time in a football game, I would say, check with me, and I'd go up to the line of scrimmage, and if they were way off, I'd throw the hitch. If they came up, then I maybe I threw a corner. But I would call my offense at the line of scrimmage, and everything would be to help me come out of my slump. I did it for myself. That hits right there helps Schrader a bunch. First down at the 24-yard line. Delvin Bryant gets the call. And pass 
crosses the 25-yard line, stopped at the 26 by Reggie White. Again, Jerome Brown, who has an interception today for the Eagles, also involved on the play. Jerome Brown, look at this. Kelvin Bryant to the outside. There's a hold on Clark as he does it tries to get loose and then Kelvin Bryant trying to cut back inside but look who's down there waiting on him number 92 Reggie White we have not had any scoring at this third quarter still 21 to 17 Washington second down and eight at the 26 Raider has wide open Art Monk Monk with a first down brings it up to the 42 yard line a gain of 16 Terry Hogue making the stop on Art Monk Putting Monk in the slot allows him the freedom now to run man for man. As you can see, turns around, no one there to cover him. Schrader reads it, sees no one's there, pops him with a little five-yard pass, and then Art Monk does the rest. Four catches for 67 yards and a touchdown for Art Monk. Redskins on their own 42-yard line with 220 remaining in the third quarter. Rogers and George Rogers gets into Eagle territory and a great bit of running off the left side picks up another first down 12 to be exact to the 46 of Philadelphia Jerome Brown and Elbert Fowles that time on the stop on Rogers who has 71 yards well the counter the counter gap we've seen it earlier to the right this time they ran it to the left with Tillman and May leading the way. It's only the second time that we've seen the counter gap, which is the bread and butter run of the Washington Redskins today. Rodgers is 71 yards. The Redskins have won 34 in a row, and one of their running backs gets 100 or more. First and 10 at the Philadelphia 45. Schrader with a low toss to Art Monk, covered by William Frizzell. I want to show you what happens on the left of your screen a slot is the there's an angle between the tackle there's a there'll be a receiver and then another receiver that guy right there is the slot and that's where monk is lining up and that's where schrader is trying to throw the football there'll be a little gap there he turns around monk goes down inside this time it works out and schrader missed him second and ten monk comes in motion to the right side Bryant. Jump pass incomplete. They had Sanders going downfield and Monk going inside. And Seth Joyner blitzing. We're at Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, capacity crowd, looking to see whether the Eagles, who are trailing 21 to 7 at one point, can come back and turn this into a big victory. They have scored 10 unanswered points. No scoring, however, in the third quarter. Joe Gibbs Redskins looking for their sixth win in a row. Two members of their outstanding defense, Monty Coleman and Dexter Manley, watching while the offense brings it up third and ten on the Eagle 46. 121 remaining in the third quarter. And open that time is Kelvin Bryant out of the backfield, and Bryant gets the first down and more and is stopped at the 31-yard line. 32 of Philadelphia by Evan Cooper. Whenever you put Clark and Monk to the right, you force to take three defensive backs, and they have to cover those guys two and one. That automatically isolates a back on Bryant man for man. The Redskins know this. They call a fine play here where Bryant has the option. He runs the option. Schrader gets him the ball. Bryant has rushed for 40 yards and has caught 41 yards. 14 on that play, and it's a first down for the Redskins. Leading by four on the delay, here is Rodgers off the left side, and a penalty marker comes flying as Rodgers is knocked out of bounds by Terry Ho, close to yet another first down. They mark it at the 25, so he's shy by about three. Well, they threw the flag at 83, Ricky Sanders, the wide receiver who went downfield, and in his efforts to help Rodgers by throwing a block, he's going to be called here for illegal use of his hands, holding. Fred Wyant. Holding, number 83, 
first down. That's the call, Mr. B. Receivers aren't heavy blockers. And what I mean, what, what is a heavy blocker? They're not going to go down there, put their head in a number, and knock a guy on his back. They're going to get position, and then they're just going to push him a little bit. Well, 83 in the top left of your screen, Sanders has his hands all over that time. Number 29, Elbert Files. They call him for holding. But hey, he's trying to do his job. Just got to keep those hands off. All right, that's going to do it for the third quarter. That is the end of the third with the score. The Redskins 21, the Eagles 17. We're back at Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw in a game that means so much to the Philadelphia Eagles who are trying to get back to 500. Their team is 3-1, and one, not counting replacement games, but of course those count. And the Redskins were good in the replacement games and without. They are 6-1 and one on the year. And as we start the fourth quarter, it'll be a first down and 12 for the Redskins in Eagle territory at the 34. 21-17 to 17 to score. No scoring in the third quarter. Detroit Lion, who was traded for Wilbert Montgomery, and a loss of 10 yards on the play. Cobb on the right of your screen, simple little blitz. No one's there to pick him up, actually, or should have picked him up, but he didn't. I'm sorry, that's Monk who comes back inside trying to help Schrader to no avail. And look at it from the outside, a simple little blitz, nothing complicated at all about this. Jacoby turns around as if to say, hey, I missed my man, and Monk said, I'll help you out, but he also missed him. Now the Redskins are out of field goal range. Second down and 22 on the Eagle 44. Quick toss, and it's behind Sanders, who is open for the moment. Roy Nell Young was covering on the play. One of the problems Schrader's having is they're showing an eight-man front, and he is having to concentrate so much on his blitz control that his train of thought is taken away from the coverage, and he's now got his mind zeroed in on, if they blitz, I've got to go here. And it's taking him out of his rhythm, and that's exactly what a good defense does to a young quarterback. It's their purpose is to take you out of your rhythm where you aren't comfortable, you're not confident with what you're doing. But not a bad idea to go to Sanders because against the 46, you want to isolate a good speed receiver against one man back there. Right, but it, the problem was that Sanders ran a 10-yard route and Schrader only had time to throw a 5-yard route. That's a di big difference. Third and 22. Again, pressure on Schrader. And down he goes, back in his own territory. Clyde Simmons. Ninth-round draft pick in his second year. Number 96 to the top right of your screen. Pitts goes down inside, occupies two people. As you can see, Cobb occupies a back, and then Simmons, 96, goes around, comes in behind, and makes the sack. A loss of nine. Third sack of the game by the Eagles. Steve Cox doesn't get off a good kick here, and a fair catch called for by Bobby Morse. And he's got it at the 24-yard line. And we'll return to Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Subaru and the new Subaru XT6, the Sport Magazine Super Bowl MVP award. And by Wrangler Jeans, made in the USA. One minute may have elapsed in this fourth quarter, but this may be the biggest quarter of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles. They trail the Redskins 21 to 17, first and 10 on their 24, and Anthony Tony breaks out and brings it down to the 29. Alvin Walton on the stop, a pickup of five. Capacity crowd today of 63,609. Watching these Eagles who are looking for their third victory in a row. It's been two years since they've achieved that. And after this game against the high-flying Redskins, they're home against the Giants and Cardinals. Redskins have the lead, though, and that's the key number. Second and five at the 29. Pitch to Tony. Gets outside, and Anthony Tony will get a first down up to the 35. 
Todd Bowles and Mel Kaufman that time on the stop. The old pitch play, anytime you can catch a linebacker or defensive end coming down inside, ideally what you'd like to do is pitch it. As you can see, Tony going inside and then Byers setting up Coleman, actually holding him, allowing this time Tony to get outside and finally right down and make the first down. Terry, Jimmy Giles, who was acquired and celebrating his 33rd birthday today, former Detroit Lion for a draft choice, is in the ball game, number 83, a tight end, and a play-action pass. Cunningham takes off. He'll get a first down and in the Redskin territory on a big play. A gain of 18 yards. Play-action passes, you, you have to have a lot of pressure. I want you to check Conwell, big right tackle, number 79. As you see, he sets up Shoals pass and then engages with Mann up underneath him. Look at the good technique. He's inside. Mann coverage allows no one to cover the quarterback. That way, Cunningham gets outside for the first down. Conwell, whose brother is a leader of a rock group here in the Philadelphia area called Tommy Conwell and the Young Rumblers. You remember them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got all their work, all their records. <laughs> first down and a great pass. By Tony on a low throw by Cunningham and the Eagles once again flirting with a first down and the crowd is revved up Neil Okowitz making the tackle on Tony these are really really gutsy calls because the ends and the linebackers for Washington are forcing Cunningham wide as you can tell 71 Grant actually has good containment just a fine throw and catch between Cunningham and Tony they're too wide, that's what I'm saying. They're really not good calls. They're just making them happen. Also making it happen, besides Tony with 65 yards rushing today, is Cunningham, who's got that extra added dimension that is causing a great wreaking habit on the Redskins. And there's Tony up the middle on a quick hitter. Needed two yards for the first down and appears to have it to the 36, and it is another Philadelphia first down. for 68 yards on three carries. Dean Hamill coming in for Daryl Grant at tackle. Grant evidently in chasing Cunningham needs a breather, so they bring in fresh bodies. You need a lot of them against Randall Cunningham. Pitch and a reverse. Carter goes oh. back to Cunningham on a flea flicker, and he's sacked by Dexter Manley. Back on the Philadelphia 49. Boy, that was as fancy as you get, Terry. That's about the fanciest flea flicker I have ever seen. Starts off with a little pitch. That's a fine job. Now we get the little handoff. Now Carter options the linebacker, but the problem with the flea flicker, it fooled no one, and Dexter Manley says, oh boy, I get to hit you, Cunningham. I'm going to hit you. And he gets his first sack of the game at a loss of 15 yards. And it's second down and a long 25 for the Eagles back on their own 48-yard line. Cunningham dumps it off to Tony. He needs blockers. Tony breaks a tackle and is ridden out of bounds at the 44 by Dean Hamill. Didn't quite get out of bounds, and the clock continues to run. A gain of 10 that time. You look back on this football game, should Philadelphia end up losing 21-17, to and you're going to really question that flea flicker. You have to run those things when people least expect them and in a situation like that, that was too much flea and flicker. That should have been a little bit more simpler and get the ball away and not allow the sack. Especially the way they were moving the ball so effectively. Best flea flicker I've seen so far is Cunningham going outside and running. Third and 15 now. Offsides. Cunningham. Open field. Gets by Walton and Tim Morrison knocks him out of bounds. It'll be a first down if the flag is against Washington. And it is. A gain of 16, he needed 15, and Randall Cunningham is Offside. now. Defense, decline, 
First down. 84 yards rushing for Randall Cunningham on a well, big play. There's containment, and when you worry about a scrambling quarterback, you worry about him, and therefore you take people wide, and therefore he can't get out of the pocket. But now he's forced up inside, and lo and behold, he gets loose, and he's as fast as anyone in the secondary, with the exception of Darrell Green at corner. So the Eagles, thanks to Randall Cunningham, who has gained 34 yards on two rushing attempts on this series, have come back from a second and 25 obstacle. First and 10 at the Redskin 26, 10 and a half minutes to play. Byers cuts inside and gets inside the 20 and a gain of about eight. Charles Mann and Barry Wilburn that time put the seal on. Last week against St. Louis, Philadelphia went up, had the big lead, gave it back to the Cardinals, gave them the momentum, and then had to take a drive with 70 seconds left to win the game. This looks like that all over again, except we have 10 minutes and counting where Philadelphia is marching an outstanding drive, led by Cunningham. Coming into this final quarter, the Redskins had a four-minute advantage in time of possession, and that might have dissipated. Second down and two. The first down inside the 15 and a penalty marker thrown or was it a free ball well they it was a fumble and the Eagles recovered it was a fumble by Byers but what happened was the ground made him fumble and of course we all know that the ground can't do that Byers coming off Tony gives him a good kick out block he jumps up in the air hits the ground and then the ball bounces free so that's not a fumble but it is a first down for the Eagles who are driving in magnificent fashion they have a first and ten on the Redskin 13 plenty of time remaining nine minutes left to Anthony Tony Tony cutting inside and gets close to the five yard line and talking to Byers, one of the things I asked him was, being a hot shot out of Ohio State where he wasn't required to block, does he like blocking for Tony now? And he says, I do. He didn't really like it, but he says, I do. We're a team here, we work together. Manley and Bowles on the stop. And this crowd is at a fever pitch right now. It'll be second down and four. Cunningham outside wide option runner pass. by Monty Coleman and Monty Coleman brings it out on a big play and the Redskin bench goes over to Monty Coleman who makes a big play to blunt an eagle rally Monty Coleman second interception he had an interception against Kelly last week when the Bills were driving once again, in the right place at the right time, reads it extremely well. Two points to make here. If you throw a slant, a quick slant, you have to throw it before the linebacker or once the receiver clears the linebacker. Eagle turnovers have resulted in 14 Redskin points. Schrader has been struggling today through the air, and the Redskins have not controlled the ball the way they like, but they have three interceptions. Wilburn, Bowles, and Monty Coleman snuffed out a touchdown drive that would have given the Eagles the lead, and it's 21-17 to with 8-10 to go. You make a point here, you either throw before or you throw behind. And now the Redskins. 24, first and 10. Schrader up the middle and it's in and out of the hands of Art Monk. Roynell Young was covering on the play. Terry, what about that call, the way they were driving down on that pass play, the play selection on that one? The greatest threat with Cunningham is outside. When you're down that close, put most pressure on a, on a linebacker in a secondary. When you get him outside, he either pumps, he either runs, or he throws. To stand him back there and have him read so close to the line of scrimmage, there's not enough room. The areas, the zones are cut down. Consequently, you get interceptions. Russ Grimm was shaken up for the Redskins, their center. Grimm had a sprained knee and came out of the 
game against the Bills and actually had an injury against the Eagles in the opening game of the year and came out in the second quarter and Jeff Bostic may come into the ball game. We'll come back to this. Meanwhile, for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Brent? All right, Dick, you gave the score. Here's how the Bears did it now. Fourth and goal against the Packers. Walter Payton leaps up over the top and just does break the plane of that goal line. It's a one-point game right now. It's a dogfight on the post-game show. We'll have all the highlights of this one. Let's send you back to Dick. All right, Brent, well, they say the Bears can't keep coming from behind to win, but they keep coming from behind, and it's a matter of time to see whether they can come back. Meanwhile, Russ Grimm is shaken up, and that would be a huge blow to the Washington Redskins' chances. One of the things that, that they wanted to accomplish in their offensive line this year, that being the, the uh, Washington Redskins, was to get larger men up front. One of the reasons Grimm's in there is because of his size. Now Bostick comes in there, and you'd have to be concerned about the snap, the exchange between the center and the quarterback, but in this case, Schrader's worked with both of them. I don't, I don't really expect any problem there. Well, the big thing about Grimm, who was moved to center this year from guard, was the fact that he is a lot bulkier with McKenzie and Grimm in there, and they, they had an offensive line that would rival the Giants. That was yep. the plan. That's what Bugle wanted, and that's what he had, he had until, of course, just now when Grimm went out. Second down and 10 at the 24. That's why I didn't feel like it would be a problem. Very untimely mix-up. And Randall Cunningham keeps the ball on the ground to Anthony Tony, And Darrell Grant makes the stop. There's the time remaining here in this fourth quarter. The Eagles have all three of their timeouts remaining. The Redskins, too, a bit early for that in a 21-17 game. You know, in a, in, a, in a case where a player is injured, such as a center, you would think that Schroeder could run to the sideline and he and Bostic could exchange some snaps, but that you can't do that. You have to stay on the playing field, the quarterback, that is. It's not like bringing a relief pitcher in. Not at all, unless you call timeout. Second and nine. Eagles on the Redskin 32. Blitz. Cunningham is going deep for Mike Quick. He's got a man. It is a touchdown. and the Eagles have taken the lead. Excitement reigns at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. 63,000 plus on hand as the Eagles have scored 17 unanswered points to take the lead over the Washington Redskins. 24-21 with 7.13 to go. Telchik kicking off and it's Griffin at the three-yard line for the Redskins. Griffin going outside to the 30-yard line and ridden out of bounds. Good return by Keith Griffin to the 32. It was Telchik, the kicker, 
who made the stop. But Mike Quick, on the receiving end of the 32-yard touchdown play, Quick has caught two scores today from Randall Cunningham, who has shaken up the Redskins with his scrambling and running as well. Seven minutes, three seconds left now. Jay Slater has not had a good game. This is a bad situation for a quarterback to try to regain his confidence. Philadelphia Eagles have been blitzing, showing the 46, and Schrader hasn't been sharp. First and 10 on the Redskin 32. Play action. Clark at midfield. And Gary Clark in Eagle territory, out of bounds at the 42 by Terry Hogue, and a pickup of 27 solid yards there. Perfect call, caught Philadelphia in a zone. You're gonna go into a zone, play action deep, and run those big 20-yard deep ends. That way you can throw underneath the safeties and over the linebackers, and this is exactly what Clark and Schrader did. Clark has caught four passes for 72 yards today and went in with a sore hamstring. First and 10 at the 41, Ricky Sanders in as the third wide receiver. Schrader going for Art Monk. Just past his reach and Monk in his disgust kicked the ball into the stands. He had beaten Andre Waters, the strong safety. Monk, one man on man, blitz once again, Schrader overthrows his man once again, but the secret here was that Jay Schrader, thinking he didn't have enough time, actually could have held the ball that split second more and got the ball to Monk, but when you've had the interceptions and the bad luck and the pressure that Philadelphia's placed on him today, you don't feel comfortable and you rush things just that little bit and it's that little bit that cost you. He has missed just enough to not get really any kind of sink going for himself today. Well, Philadelphia's done an excellent job of disguising their defenses and, and confusing them. Second down and 10 on the Eagle 41. Another play action call and Schrader chased from the pocket. And incomplete intended for Don Warren. Downfield, covering on the play was Terry Hogue. Normally a blocking tight end, shaken up on the play. Well, this is one of those hits where Warren going across trying to help Schrader out and not seeing the secondary goes up and then Hogue has a direct shot at him and throws his left shoulder right at his left shoulder. Now the Redskins are upset thinking that time that Hogue had thrown the elbow, but indeed it was the shoulder. Warren will go out of the game, and there has been a change in the offensive line for the Redskins. Raleigh McKenzie has moved to center, and Jeff Bostic has moved to left guard. And you got a glimpse there of Doug Williams, the quarterback who led the Redskins to the victory over the Eagles in the opening game of the year when Schrader was knocked out of action. And you got to you imagine there's a lot of questions in Washington if the Redskins should lose this game as to whether or not there should have been a quarterback change. Third down and 10 at the 41. Kelvin Bryan in the lineup. Blitz. And they nearly get him. Reichenbach nearly got Schrader, and the pass is knocked away incomplete, intended for Art Monk. Defending was Roy Nell Young, who has played a tremendous game in the secondary for the Eagles. And it'll be fourth down for the Redskins. The late blitz coming from the outside. You're gonna see Schrader as he notices right in the center of your screen, the blitz comes up late. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. Eight guys coming, one's gonna be free. Reichenbach is free, 50, not 55, forces Schrader out. He guns the football, the ball is knocked loose. It's fourth down and Steve Cox will punt it. Bobby Morse will let it fly. And the Redskins can't keep it in play, and the crowd cheers that maneuver. A 41-yard punt by Cox, and with 6.24 to go, the Eagles have the lead by three points and the ball when we come back to Veterans Stadium. 
Sunday. The NFL today starts it off at 12.30 Eastern. Dallas, New England, that's a tremendous matchup up at Foxborough. The Cowboys will try to press the Redskins, who will be home against Detroit. The Rams and the Cardinals will go at it. One of these teams want to gain respectability. That's the first half of our doubleheader. Some of you will see the Giants and Eagles. Others, the Saints and the 49ers in an NFC West battle. Now, the question is for the Eagles, with the lead for the first time since the beginning of the ball game, do you go too conservative? How do you play it the way you've been going? What? Well, that's a good <laughs> question, Dick. I, I would like to think that they're going to try to run the football, but there is, I, I expect them to get Cunningham outside again. They've been able to run with Tony going up inside now. I think they'll try that again, and then they're going to get Cunningham outside. Would you try a gimmick play now? No, no, no absolutely not. To this get is not a, exactly. This is not a time for gimmicks. If you can get out, say, oh, pick up two or three first downs, and you really feel the momentum coming your way, yeah, maybe you try it, but right now, no. Okay. Eagles come out at the 20-yard line, first and 10. Buddy Ryan said he'd have to pull out all the stops. We haven't seen all the stops. Close, though. Byers gets nothing on first down. Okay, the thing that's happened right off the bat is that Washington has come up, Dick, and showed Philadelphia that they're going to play them with man coverage and send the linebackers, blitzing the linebackers. Good time now to get Cunningham out and then try the deep pass. If you see that, you know, you have to take what a defense gives you. Just because they, you don't want to do it doesn't mean you don't. You do it. You have to take what they give you, and they're giving him the deep ball. There's man. Up. Second down and 11. Byers gets the call again. Cuts inside and gets a few and brings it out to the 23 yard line. There's the time remaining here, and Redskins have two timeouts remaining. Bowles and Kaufman on the stop. Pittsburgh and Kansas City locked up in a tight one, as are the Cardinals and the Buccaneers. Boy, St. Louis has come from way back. Cardinals scored four touchdowns in the last quarter. San Diego has come from behind to beat the Colts. Minnesota leading the Raiders. Green Bay, Chicago going down to the wire. And underway, Detroit and Dallas. Third down and seven at the 23. And a whistle, and let's see if the 30-second clock had run down. Delay, offense, third down. So it is still third down, and now they'll back it up to the 18-yard line, make it third and 12. Before a, a, a really a young football team gets good, their defense is normally leading the way. Today, that's exactly what's happened with the, with the exception, of course, of Quick's big catches and Cunningham scrambling. Right now, I believe Buddy Ryan is very content in feeling that his defense can handle Washington, therefore the conservative calls on the first two plays. Won't do anything rash now. Third and 12. The pass is caught by Tony, and Wilburn wraps him up at the 22 yard line. And that will create a fourth down. John Telchik will come in and kick. Down and a penalty marker. See whether an ineligible receiver was downfield on that play. Ineligible, number 67, downfield, declined, fourth down. Jerry Fury, the center, penalty is declined, and so Telchik will boot it from about the 10. There is Fury, five-year veteran from Syracuse. Eric Yarber goes back for the Redskins on his own 40-yard line. So Buddy Ryan has confidence in his defense. Going to find out how much he has coming up in the next series. How much is genuine? Players are counting everyone. Look at that. Pointing fingers, counting, making sure they had their man. They got it off in time. Oh. And a great kick by Telchik sends Yarber back to the 25. And down he goes. Big play of the game. John Telchik's kick from the 10. and no return. Jonathan Dumball making the tackle. And with 4.07 to go, the Redskins go back to work. They need a field goal to tie this game. And we want to remind you again, we have 
Quite a matchup coming up next Saturday on CBS. 13th ranked Alabama. Big winners over LSU against Notre Dame. Great comeback yesterday against BC. Notre Dame and BC. BC had them down, and they came back in the fourth quarter and won the game, and Alabama took care of LSU down at Baton Rouge. Two hot teams next week on CBS. Right here on first down. Oh, Kelvin Bryant gets hit hard by Jerome Brown. Jerome Brown's a madman. The old counter gap play, but Jerome Brown literally got in the guard's hip pocket and used the guard to make the stop. He didn't tackle him. He threw the guard in there, and the guard made the tackle. They say Jerome Brown, if he had one problem coming out of Miami, was he was never criticized, kind of babied. He's a little bit lazy, and he doesn't like to work. But if you can get him mad, looks like he's mad now. Looks like he's a pretty good football player. I'd say so. Second and ten on the Redskins 26. Schrader has Monk. Monk tries to get away, but he can, and is stopped at the 40 by Roynell Young. Good enough, though, for a Redskin first down and a pickup of 14. Craig Schrader here with a gun that he has and getting making this completion possible. Very few quarterbacks can throw a ball 30 yards on the line and beat a defense. Ronell Young, 43, laying off of Monk. There's the gun. There's the fine hands that Monk displays. Gets the first down for Washington. Under three minutes to go, and Monk with five catches, 81 yards. This is his best game of the season. At the 40, Redskin territory. Schrader is going deep, and once again, a familiar scene just past the outstretched arms of Art Monk. Andre Waters was covering on the play. Only two players out. Well, actually three. Sanders went out in the flat. Monk went deep, took two men with him, and forced the strong safety at that time to cover Clark man for man. A kind of day that Jay Schrader would like to forget. 13 for 42 and a pair of interceptions. Well, he had the shoulder injury, missed the first game. It's his third game back. He hasn't been as accurate as he would like, and you got to feel like his shoulder's not 100%, and he's not really into the floor yet. He's really in preseason, three or four more games, and he'll be back to where he used to be. Keep in mind, though, that he has trailed coming into the final quarter 14 times, and he has rallied the Redskins to win on eight of those occasions. So he's a come-from-behind quarterback. Second and 10. Audible. Back at the 40. Schrader. As Bryant, good juke by Bryant, and gets the first down before going out of bounds in Eagle territory at the 47. Andre Waters on the stop, a gain of 13, and it was Bryant who got the first down on his own. It's amazing to me how you put a quarterback or any player in a situation that he is very comfortable in. Schrader's comfortable in coming from behind. He's comfortable in adverse conditions. Today he hasn't thrown the ball well, missed a lot of deep passes, had a lot of blitz pressure on him. Today makes an audible here, a crucial audible, gets outside, first down. Keith Griffin has come in the game for the first time in the backfield for the Redskins, who have a first and 10 at the Eagle 47, and Philadelphia will call a timeout. Philadelphia doesn't like Wade Phillips doesn't like the matchup he had. Cedric Brown, 23, coming in, now coming out, now going back in. Wasn't the matchup that they wanted. Each team with two timeouts left, and Reichenbach is getting an earful from Buddy Ryan here. Buddy Ryan said that this man picked up our 46 better than anyone I've ever had at middle linebacker. Evidently, though, he didn't do a good job on that play. How much do you think? this means to Buddy Ryan these last two minutes and 36 seconds he's come under fire from almost every direction he now feels he has the Eagles where he wants them and he is 236 away from scoring as he told you maybe the biggest victory of his coaching career and a chance to get to 500 knocking off Washington this is only his second year here he cleaned house last year I would think Buddy Ryan has done a fine job here in Philadelphia. I don't see where the pressure should come from. If anything, he should be at ease because this team, in my opinion, is farther along than they ever would have been. Unusual methods, but it looks as if those methods have worked. He's not well liked by a lot of people, and it's only because he's brutally honest, and we Americans have a hard time dealing with people that tell us exactly how we feel to our face. team with two timeouts left first and ten Redskins on the Eagle 47 they need three to tie Schrader unlimbers it and wide open is Gary Clark who scores the touchdown and the Redskins go wild 47 yards to a wide open Gary Clark and now it's the Eagle 
Eagles who must answer this punctuated scoring drive by the Redskins. How can it be? How can it be? How can you miss so many people all day long? And then in the closing two minutes and 30 seconds, hit the big one that wins the game. Clark made a hitch. As you can see, when he made the hitch, the safety bit for the ball. Young bit for it. He went down deep, wide open, easy throw, easy catch, touchdown. Gary Clark with five receptions and 119 yards has given the Redskins the lead again. At 27 to 24, Ali Haji Sheik with a very important conversion coming up. And the kick is no good. It's off to the left. The kick is no good. It, one of the Eagles may have gotten a piece of it. And instead of a four-point lead, the Redskins lead is three, 27 to 24. And now the Eagles can tie it up with a three-pointer. Right up the middle, I appear, is coming from the outside. No, it's right up the middle. I believe it's Jerome Brown, 99, who gets his hands up and gets a piece of the football and knocks it wide. Let's take a look again. May have been Simmons. 96 is Simmons to the right of your screen. Simmons, White, and Brown all coming in there. Two sets of hands goes up. Oh, it is Simmons, 96, right hand. So Clyde Simmons, who blocked a field goal the last two weeks and also blocked a conversion against the Cardinals. He blocked a field goal against the Dallas Cowboys, and he is becoming a man you're going to have to watch on the films because the magic of Clyde Simmons continues today. Well, last week, Randall Cunningham was voted NFC Player of the Week, and the week before that, Clyde Simmons was voted Defensive Player of the Week. Redskins lead is three, 27 to 24, and that mixed extra point could loom large with 2.29 to go. Redskins' only loss this year was to Atlanta by one point. On a missed extra point, Cox kicking off to Bobby Morse. Morse at the five. Tripped up at the 22-yard line. Making the play for the Redskins is Reggie Branch. 2.19 to go. The Eagles have two timeouts remaining. Randall Cunningham come into the game. The best experience he's ever had as a quarterback was last week against St. Louis when he brought his team from behind in the closing seconds to a touchdown pass to Garrity and won the game. He now says to himself, I've done it before. I can do it again. Eagles on their own 23. He knows he'll get some pressure. Fakes a pass. Anthony Tony out of the backfield. Bites his way to the 25-yard line. Coleman and Mann making the stop. It may come down to Paul McFadden's foot to try to send this game into overtime. And we wind down to the two-minute warning. A thriller here at Veterans Stadium. And a player is hurt, so the clock is at 2.02, and one of the Redskins is shaken up. So hold on. While we have a moment, we want to remind you as they attend to the injured Redskin tonight on CBS starts with 60 minutes. Tennis at a federal prison, you haven't seen the half of it, but you will tonight on 60 minutes. And following 60 minutes, it's Murder, She Wrote, starring Angela Lansbury, followed by the CBS Sunday movie Kids Like These, starring Tyne Daly and Richard Crenna. That's coming up tonight here on CBS. Still don't know for sure who the injured Redskin is. And we're not going to guess. But what a game. Well, it's a great game. It's had all the suspense. We've had the, the boxing where they've kind of, you know, take a little pop and counter pop and uh, big plays, miss big plays, everything. And now it boils down once again to Cunningham, whether or not he can take the Eagles down and score. Let's see the end of the play and see if we can figure out who the injured Redskin player is. Well, it's, it's Monty Coleman, Monty number Coleman. 51. Coming at the top of your screen, Coleman plants the left leg, cuts back inside. Looks like he has his head down low. And it's Coleman who has a... And what? Yeah, that's what it looks like. He's got his, got his bell rung, had his head down, had his head tucked, and Tony ran right into him. Meanwhile, all this does is make things kick, 
kickers in cases like this, situations realizing they may be called on, you just you do things, that, you just do something. In this case, McFadden just sitting down because what that tells 63,000 people here is that I'm cool, I've got it under control, call on me, I'll pop that baby in there. And it looks like Holman is cool now as he gets up. Seems to be all right as they walk him off the field. We talked about all the different weird plays we've seen today. We've had seven turnovers, three by the Redskins, two interceptions, Jerome Brown and Roynell Young, and three interceptions by Philadelphia, by the Redskins against Cunningham. Second down and eight at the 25-yard line. Cunningham gets by Marcus Cook. Fires to Tonal Atazi. He's got a first down to the 36. Gain of 11 and great second effort by Tonal Atazi. And now we have our two-minute warning with 1.49 showing on the clock. Dick Stockton and Terry Bradshaw back here. We've had our two-minute warning. Waiting in the wings is Paul McFadden whose three-pointer, if it comes to that, could send this game into overtime. There's the timeout story. Monty Coleman, who was shaken up a moment ago, is back in the lineup for the Redskins. First and ten after Tottle Atazi made a key catch at the Eagle 36. Inside handoff to Tony. Bounces off a defender, and Anthony Tony gets close to midfield on a sensational exhibition of running. 13 yards. And the Eagles line up in a hurry. Morrison on the stop. Big game for Anthony Tony. Cunningham has Tony as a receiver, and Tony fights his way out of bounds. May have another first down. Wilburn covering there, and the clock stops. 1:23 to go, and now McFadden starts to tighten the shoe. That's right, Tony, second-round draft choice kid, showing you everything tonight. Quick moves as a fullback, extra hard running, a good receiver out of the backfield. He's given them everything they need today to get this football down in scoring position. And when I say tighten the shoes, I mean the left one because he doesn't have one on the right foot. <laughs> Redskin territory at the 40-yard line, first and 10. Eagles still have two timeouts left. Cunningham in trouble. Goes downfield and smartly throws the ball away, and that's something that young quarterbacks don't always do early in their careers. When we talk to Buddy Ryan about Randall Cunningham's performance last week against St. Louis, and that thing that impressed him the most, and he said, the thing that impressed me the most was when he threw the football away. 17 for 30, 229 yards. In the slot once again was quick. He's got to see that quick came across the middle, wide open for big yardage that time. Cunningham had hit five in a row before that incompletion. Greg Garrity is wide to the left. Two wide receivers to the right. Second and 10, Cunningham is going deep for Garrity in the end zone. in front. If they hold it, he'll be a hero for the second week in a row. Paul McFadden. And this is an important conversion. It's good. Two things important here, Dick, that made this happen. Cunningham's ability to get outside, but the smart thing was done by Garrity as he goes down, makes his move inside, back outside, sees Cunningham scrambling, and now turns it up the field for the end zone. Cunningham throwing on the run, nails him, and then Garrity, with outstanding hands at Penn State, makes a fantastic catch. A 40-yard touchdown play. Greg Garrity caught the winner last week, a nine-yarder with 40 seconds left. And here's what happened. Last week, 
a nine-yard scoring pass from Cunningham. And that was his second touchdown ever. His first, first touchdown ever. Guess who threw it? <laughs> Harry Bradshaw, December 10th, 1983. Steelers against the Jets. Terry Bradshaw finds Greg Garrity. Greg Garrity makes the catch for the Steelers. And Pittsburgh beat the Jets 34 to 7. And Terry, that was one of your last touchdown passes, That's, huh? That was my last game. I played one quarter and he caught my next to last touchdown pass of my career. He always had the hand, and the Steelers, for some reason or another, got rid of him. Philadelphia's glad they did. On the ground, Terry Orr picks it up for the Redskins and barrels it back with 102 showing on the clock. So now Greg Garrity has caught three touchdown passes in his career, and this may be the biggest of them all. Well, he's running a route. He's got man-for-man -man coverage, as you can tell, outside. Timmy Morrison in the place of Barry Wilburn goes in, goes out. Now he says Cunningham scrambling. Now a good wide receiver will do exactly this. He will turn it for the end zone because if it's a big pass, it can either be a an interference call on the five-yard line or a touchdown, and that's what he got. But this game isn't over. If you're the Washington Redskins, you've come back, and if you're Jay Schrader, you brought him back. First and ten, Redskins on their own 34 with 102 remaining. They have two timeouts left. Schrader. Kelvin Bryant got clobbered, and a fine play by the free safety, Terry Hogue, number 34. Terry Hogue simply standing deep, reading Schrader's eyes. Schrader goes to the right. Hogue, being a free safety, has the responsibility to go to the football. That time, not a very well-thrown ball by Schrader. It looked as though it slipped. It wasn't a tight spiral. There's the timeout story. The Redskins are on their own 34-yard line, second down and 10. And this series could be a big step in the surge of the Philadelphia Eagles year and in the future. Schrader in trouble. Fires it and it's caught by Bryant. And it's a fumble. And it's recovered by Philadelphia. Mike Pitts makes the recovery. Former number one draft pick from Falcons with a big fumble recovery and the joint is jumping in Philadelphia. The Eagles have the lead and now the ball. Well, as you can see, a simple four-man rush. Schrader steps up in the pocket, then steps out to avoid Pitts' rush, gets outside, finds Bryant. Bryant fumbles, Pitt recovers. Mike Pitts with the fumble recovery. Eight turnovers in the game and this was number eight. As you can see, Bryant simply just a check all about, just someone to help Schrader out of trouble. There's the completion, and there's the fumble. Andre Waters made the hit. And the Eagles, with 46 seconds to go, trying to seal off a 31-27 game. Terry, this is interesting, as the Redskins call a timeout. You remember what happened against Dallas when Randall Cunningham faked a kneel and then threw a long pass. Of course, that was against Dallas. And it was bad blood between Buddy Ryan and the Cowboys. But, well, we want to thank some people for their role in bringing you this broadcast today. And what an exciting football game here in Philadelphia. Keep in mind that the Redskins at one point had a 21-7 lead. And then the Eagles came back with 17 unanswered points. The big 47-yarder to Clark. Missed conversion, but it didn't mean much the way Cunningham brought him back. This game serves notice to the rest of the National Football League. I believe that the Philadelphia Eagles have found themselves. The next two games are here at home, and the teams coming in here are going to realize this place will be packed, and this town is excited about the offense and the defense that Ryan's put together. 40 seconds remaining. Redskins call their last timeout of the ball game. So the Redskins went into this ball game with a 6-1 record. No one with a better mark 
looking for their sixth in a row, and instead, the Philadelphia Eagles will appear to come out of this with their third straight victory, the first time in the last two years, and a chance to even their record at four wins and four losses. Buddy Ryan said, coming off of last week's game, we have enough emotion stored up. We certainly didn't use it, and they've used it today, and it's been to their benefit as they've risen to the occasion, and it looks like they're going to win this game, 31-27. Let's take a look now at the NFC standings in the Eastern Division. We started the day giving the Eagles the victory. They will be now two games behind the Redskins. The Cowboys are playing the Detroit Lions. And the rest of the division, they may not catch Washington, but they could be a playoff contender the rest of the way. Now the final seconds will tick off. The Chicago Bears down 24-23 have kicked a 52-yard field goal and lead 26-24 and it's over. The Bears have won. So the Bears now have the best record in the NFC pending the San Francisco 49ers. At 7-1, the Redskins drop to 6-2 and, and the Eagles with a tremendous victory. 31-27. So for Terry Bradshaw, this is Dick Stockton saying so long from Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia. Final score, 31-27. Post-game show coming up next. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.